Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my channel for the Bravo Breakdown with Jolene. Stand up comedian and Bravo super fan Jolene Lunds are here to break down all things Bravo. Today, you guys have been so patient and so amazing. We are going to be breaking down part one of the Vanderpump Rules reunion. And it was full of, it was so meaty. It was the meatiest piece of meat that ever made it. Okay. So first things first, you guys, if you are new to my channel, hit that subscribe. We have a good time. We always have a good time. Um, also I will preface, I am a very opinionated woman. Okay, so if you don't like opinionated women, you're not going to like this channel. That's my opinion! I am definitely biased when it comes to my own opinions about the Bravo shows we talk about. You are welcome to your opinion in the chat or in the comment section after the video posts. Um, and we can have different opinions. And that's the fun of it all. Um, but we just hopefully will be respectful of each other. And hopefully I don't tell anyone to F off. That's what, that's usually my goal of every live stream is I don't want to tell someone to F off, but sometimes it happens, but really I love all of you. All right. Also smash that like you guys. It helps me in the algorithm. So like, like, like the video, share me out with your friends. If you're not following me on social media, please do. You can follow me on Instagram at Jolene Lunzer. Also the Tiki Taki at Jolene Lunzer. And I don't know if you guys watched Impact Nightline. Uh -huh. I, you might have seen a familiar face. Granted, I did have the beauty filter on for that TikTok. So I was looking real good. I was looking like post Ozempic. Well, not too far into Ozempic where your face gets like this, but I was looking really good on the Nightline latest episode uh, by Impact or it's Impact Nightline. Anyways, I was on Nightline. Um, I feel like they could have utilized me more, but I appreciate just, just being, you know, nominated. I guess. Um, and they did an episode on Scandal. And it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Could have used some more Jolene, but it was pretty good. We take a comedic uh, look at all things Bravo. We also take an in-depth look. We speak from our experiences. You guys sound off in the chat. I love hearing from you. Um, and if you want to support the channel further than just liking and subscribing, you could do it. Indiana Girl Jules did. Thank you, Jules. And send a super chat while we're live or a super thanks after the video posts. And then we also have a uh, YouTube membership. I, th I think Krista joined the membership before the live started. So welcome to the YouTube besties tier. And I also have a Patreon. Okay. All that out of the way. Indiana Girl Jules, thank you so much for the first super chat of the live stream. I reject your opinion. Love Lala. Congrats on your new home. Thank you for the content over VPR. It's my favorite to watch. I saw you on the Hulu Impact episode about Scandal. It was uh, pretty exciting. I was like, oh, I'm so glad I put on that beauty filter. I am so glad. <laughs> <laughs> that I put on the beauty filter. You guys, thank you for your patience. I have been moving since, la I think I got, we got the keys to the house. So this is my new studio. It's still in the works here, but um, Thursday night. So I have been just moving, 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 shopping, 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 unpacking, unpacking, unpacking. Um, I haven't figured out how to get my second monitor working yet. And my husband's at work. So uh, yeah, there's only so much you can Google. Okay. It works, but my mouse doesn't go over there. I can't get the display. You guys don't need to hear that boring city township. So I'm not going to be able to have as interactive lives as I normally like to, where we pull up some video and stuff, but I'm still going to see if, uh, we can at least, I think I have some of these, which are the little overlays here. So here's all our little friends that were at the reunion. So Vanderpump Rules season 10 reunion part one. Holy shit. Okay. We can swear now we're four minutes in. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit, shit, shitty shit of the shit, shit. Okay. Holy all the shits. I probably got demonetized, but I had to say that many shits. This reunion I watched a bunch of times, mainly because I have ADHD, but also because it was making me laugh. I watched it when it first aired. I watched it the next day. I watched it a couple days later. Today I've watched it, I don't know, like three times. 
I was in world market laughing out loud because I just had my AirPod in and I was listening to James Kennedy be like, uh, your band sucks dick and <laughs> you're a loser. I don't care. James Kennedy made me laugh out loud. I am not going to apologize for the fact that this reunion, I do know James loves attention. I do know all of these things. I do know that he hasn't been perfect in the past. None of them have, but I definitely appreciate uh, James Kennedy just telling, we need, here's the thing. A lot of people don't realize, um, and I think Lisa Vanderpump, I have so many things I want to get into regarding this episode and my mind is going everywhere. Um, and we just have so much to talk about you guys. Okay. So the thing is we are looking for, I've heard some people complaining saying, Oh, this reunion, I didn't get to hear everyone speak. I didn't, you know, we couldn't, people were talking over each other. Yes. It's a shit show because literally this is the first time in Bravo history that a major event happened. Um, post taping when they had already wrapped, but then they had enough, it was a big enough event and they had enough time to then go, all right, let's get the cameras back up and let's go and, um, film some additional footage so we could add it into the current season that is airing. So that is, um, where we're at, uh, with that. So it's going to be very, you know, untraditional. It's not going to be your traditional, uh, you know, reunion, of course, you're just, I mean, these people are finding out in real time. And so I just, I don't know, people are saying, Oh, I didn't like it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. It was like gladiator battle style of our Bravo liberties, uh, Bravo liberties. It was, they were just coming for each other and we need people to drag Sandoval to hell. Okay. Um, I watched it on Peacock because if you don't have the Peacock app or Peacock or whatever you have to do to have Peacock, I think it's like $4.99 a month. I'm not sure. I pay for way too many subscriptions to things, but I just, I love TV. Obviously I'm here with you right now talking about TV. Hello, producer Tilly's here as well. Um, but you have to get the swears. You have to get the swears. Peacock airs the reunion with the swears. So there's something so liberating and wonderful about hearing the F word, especially when it is F word uh, worthy, you know, and this definitely is. All right. So please let me know all your thoughts, hopes, and opinions in the chat. I'll try to get to the comments. Obviously, super chats. I'll highlight you guys. And um, let's really get started uh with this let me just customize this so it is our subscribers only chat so we don't get any weird trolly trolls mm. i should have grabbed another beverage i should have grabbed a a straw but here we are here we are okay you guys oh my gosh okay um like amber lynn says i'm saying I approve of violence, but I think James could beat Tom up. Okay. Put it in the chat. Now, obviously we don't approve of violence. We're not a violent channel except for when we're a violent channel. Okay. Who do you think would win James Kennedy or Tom Sandy, but in a fight? Okay. Let's say it was a, a slap fight, just, you know, just slapping each other or hitting each other with their hair. Cause they both have long bangs and they were just hitting each other with their bangs. I think it's going to be James. I think all day, every day, we are going to see James Kennedy win. First of all, he has age on his side. He's young, very fit. He's been working on his fitness. He's like, I've been up in the gym just working on my fitness because I love, I love Ali. We are seeing a whole new side of Sears and a whole new side of James Kennedy. He is like a feminist all of a sudden. It took forever to happen, but I hope it stays. I hope it lands. Whatever Ali is doing, and I hate that the pressure's on Ali, but keep it up. I mean, because we are definitely seeing a James that I hope is around to stay for good because I like this uh, James Kennedy much more than um, the other one. Okay. And I know he's growing, he's growing up, you know, so we're, we're, you know, we're going to give James, I mean, he, he's, he's 30 now. There's a different, a different mojo. He's found a woman who reads crystals and knows if his moon is in Taurus or anus or wherever it is. Like he knows these things. So we have, uh, you know, James now 
who used to fat shame women, now he's sticking up for women. I mean, the progression is crazy. And Tom Sandoval, or Sandy Bud, as we call him over here, he is the one we thought was a good one. And he turns out to be complete shit. This dude is, at least with James, we saw he struggled with alcohol. He struggled with his mouth. He struggled with aggression. Tom Sandy Butt has been struggling with all of that, but in secret, behind the scenes, secret. He's a secret asshole. And I would, I, I don't like an asshole, period. Okay. I have to get used to my mic standing over here. But I would prefer an outward asshole than a secret asshole because those secret assholes, they sneak in. Oh my gosh. And then you're just like, what? And that's what we're seeing now. Okay. So the reunion starts, everybody arrives and, uh, you know, we want to know what's the truth. They're like scandal. We're going to talk about it. We're finally going to get to the bottom of it. Everyone's showing up looking fantastic. We've previously talked about their outfits. Um, I think I shouldn't say everyone's looking fantastic because what in the Dawson's queef is freaking um, Sandoval wearing? What, what is with the big shirt with the lapel, like open? I mean, just he looks, mm, no, thank you. I don't, and, and it's not just because I despise him right now. It's because I despise him and he looks gross. I don't like that outfit. It's not a good outfit. Chicken head. Thank you so much. So funny. Grandpa Tom. LOL. Love you. Enjoy your new home. Thank you so much. I appreciate that super chat. DM rocks coming in with another super chat. I was not surprised that Lisa Vanderpump defended Sandoval. Oh, we'll get to that because she has defended the men over the women in past seasons. Lisa Vanderpump. I did. If you're not following me on TikTok and also on Instagram, um, Married the number two Bravo is my Bravo account, but follow me at Jolene Lenzer as well. Um, and basically, here's the deal with Lisa Vanderpump, and we'll get right into this. Toms, or I should say, yeah, the Toms are always going to be protected by Lisa Vanderpump because she has a vested interest. She literally is in a business with them. It might only be 5%, but she named her restaurant after the Toms. So it now looks like she is trying to salvage whatever she can of their reputation. However, this isn't the move she should make. I feel like people would, you know, respect her decision a lot more um, if she progressed because Lisa Vanderpump has that vested interest and she also has uh, the generational gap. And Lisa, you know, I believe she's a boomer um, and m my generation as well, but especially... Lisa's generation was raised under that, you know, boys will be boys BS. So she's been conditioned to believe that like, oh, the boys, you know, because Lisa, if you think about it, Lisa Vanderpump's hates Kristen Doty. Kristen Doty hates Lisa Vanderpump, blah, blah, blah. And it all stemmed from Kristen. She felt was disrespectful and she was. And she said, suck a dick. Well, Tom is literally out there being aggressive towards women, getting in their faces, disparaging his brand, destroying his brand by having, you know, this super long affair with Rachel Raquel. And yet Lisa still is like, I'm going to stay in business with him. And then James Kennedy through the years as well, you know, spit on Kristen's door, uh, got in fights at Lisa's establishment, talked back to her, called her son fat. Granted, she did have a friendship with, I think, James's dad, or, or family, but still, we've always seen Lisa give more leeway to the men, and it's been frustrating. And this reunion was no different. I was so frustrated with Lisa Vanderpump. Now, I love you, Lisa, and this comes from a place of love, but don't make me go Team Kyle Richards on you, okay? Because I will. I will turn like this. You have to, I, I do not think Lisa should have been at this reunion. This reunion, the stakes were too high, and she could provide us with nothing nothing. Maybe bring her out if they were going to talk about the businesses later, but I don't care if her name is on the show. I do not care. Right now, Lisa Vanderpump isn't selling the show. Scandaval is selling the show. People are tuning in for that. So the fact that some people were saying, oh, she's kind of, you know, an impartial. She's not impartial one bit. She's very partial. She's in business with these boys. She has a business named after them. She needs their reputation to get better. So she's going into damage control and it's so unfortunate for the women on the cast because again, they're getting shit on rather than them being able to fully express themselves and us being able to see the the women come together. She's questioning them left and right. Oh, but you did that. And oh, but James, you, you weren't always like that. And, and 
Lala made some fantastic points. I know that Lala was very, in interviews, she was saying she felt very sick the next day after this reunion. She was just like, I don't know. I I, I had so much anger in me. It, you know, I think she was, um, I think probably if I have to guess, I think Lala was feeling insecure. And I think she was feeling like, should I feel bad? Did I go too hard? Did I go too far? Which Think about it. The Toms never have to think about that. Tom Sandoval never has to think, did I go too far? Did I yell too much? Did I uh, gaslight too much? Did I, you know, as a cis male, but I get it because like Lala, I am also a very opinionated woman who does not shy away from a battle. If I got to be Lauren from Utah, I will. So, but it's not you know, received the same when women behave assertively, when women are aggressive. Tom Sandoval arguably is the most aggressive person on this cast. He is constantly in fights with people. He's in people's business. He's telling people what to do. He's gotten in people's faces. He punched Jax in the head till he bled. I'm not saying, you know, he didn't. I mean, he didn't deserve it, but uh, he did. So when Lisa came back at Lala in this reunion and said, oh, Lala, you're so aggressive. I was like, Lisa, you, I'm going to, does Kyle Richards have a Patreon? Because I am going to start the Kyle Richards fan club now because I need you to stop with this. This is ridiculous. You are calling Lala out for being aggressive, yet the guy you're in business with has gotten in physical fights on your television show and loves to get up in a woman's face and up in her business. Tom Sandoval is so aggressive. So, so, so aggressive. Thank you, Joanne, for the super sticker. I appreciate that very, very, very much. Okay. So I feel as though, you know, Lala had some great points. Now I will say Lala definitely is projecting. She's upset because of, you know, I mean, Tom Sandoval has been coming at Lala for season after season. There's no love lost. Uh, Tom Schwartz, obviously they had beef this season as well. And she's coming off of, you know, her relationship and her breakup with Randall. And I just watched the Randall, like, documentary on Hulu. Oh, my God. That guy is a monster, in my opinion, after watching it. Yuck, yuck, double yuck. I mean, I already knew. I mean, looking at him right when he came on the scene, I was like, what, what's this old guy doing? What's Big Ed's older brother doing hanging out with the kids? What's happening over here? Huh? So I... You know, I, I like to, but obviously I like to say I'm an, I mean, I'm an okay judge of character. Uh, I, I, I get it wrong sometimes as we all do, but, um, this guy is disgusting. So I do understand that Lala is projecting a little bit, but we need it right now. We need to drag Tom Sandy about to hell. We got to just let everybody drag him, everybody drag. Cause otherwise he will gaslight the shit out of it. And Lisa will make excuses for him and he'll continue to be problematic and get a grade at it. So, mm -mm. uh, Haley hopes, thank you so much for the super chat says, am I alone in thinking Tom Sandy, but is trying to become Freddie Mercury, Ooh, Freddie Mercury, the clothes, the stash stage behavior. Oh, he could never, I think so. I think so. I think Tom Sandoval has no originality as much as he liked to tell James Kennedy during this live, James, you haven't changed your hair. What kind of artist are you? I'm sorry, sir. Art comes in all forms, but it, it necessary just because you don't change your hair. I mean, did Van Gogh always change his hairdo? Is he not an artist because Tom Sandoval said he had the same hair for too long? He is just the epitome of a materialistic, gross, L.A. yuck, yuck dude. Okay? Just of all the things to be like, you don't change your hair. Bro, maybe you should change your hair less because some of these hairdos, remember with the long in the front and the, mm -mm, no, he put, he got extensions. You did extensions and bad ones, no less. You did extensions. So you don't get to talk about other people's hair because you did extensions. Producer Tilly is here. She's very upset. Thank you, Artie's, for the super sticker. Appreciate you. So, um, yes, exactly epic. She, what Lisa did is she shamed the rest of the cast to shield Tom from criticism. They were all held responsible at past reunions. Such a good point. Epic. It was irrelevant and frustrating. And that's why Lala was key in this. When Lala said to Lisa, and I reject your opinion, and Lauren from Utah rejects your opinion, there is a time where the children grow and they must stand up to the parents in the most respectful way possible. And that's what Lala did. She's like, and I reject 
your opinion. And also quit bringing up things from 500 years ago to deflect from what you did today. When Tom mentions that James Kennedy had sex with Kristen to get on the show, so, so, who he was literally 21. I, I don't even recognize that guy anymore. He's literally in his 30s now. You had an affair with your life partner's best friend for probably what we're finding out is more than seven months. So no, no. And you didn't even like Kristen in the first place. You were cheating on her too. Mm, this guy. So I felt like Lala, she came in, she came in hot, but she came in correct. And I was here for it. Now, in the beginning, they did these little like montages, interviews, and we're going to see more of this in parts two and three of the reunion where they had separate interviews. Andy Cohen did with Ariana, Tom, and Rachel Raquel. Okay. Ariana, obviously stunning everything. I, I like how they're incorporating these little interviews because it's showing us how big of a liar Tom Sandy butt is. I'm like, oh, Sandy butt, liar, liar, pants on fire. Sandoval's a liar. Sandoval's a liar for sure. He is not only a worm with a mustache, but the dude is a liar. And he's getting caught in his lies from the interview he did just before the reunion with Andy Cohen. You're a worm with a mustache. You're a worm with a mustache. And you could tell the whole cast was getting very, you know, frustrated with um, the detours. I will say the roadblocks that Lisa and the Toms tried to put in the progress. Because this is the first time that we've seen the cast really come together as a whole um, and agree. They all agree that Tom Sandy Butt is an asswipe. And Tom Schwartz was complicit. And also... Finding out that Schwartz knew. Okay, so they didn't get their timelines, you know. They didn't get their timelines matched up. So there you had freaking Schwartz. Like, I found out uh, the end of May. And Tom, Sandy was like, what? No, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, I didn't. What? Huh? Uh. <laughs> freaking out and everyone's and the whole the rest of the cast is just like oh did you guys not get your timelines did you not get your timelines oh. and that's what tom sandoval tried to do right away in this reunion he tried to set the tone he tried to set the narrative he came in so right off the bat so andy's doing his 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 little bit you know with ariana before the um, uh, reunion and then a uh, little interview. And then we find out from Tom that he says that Schwartz knew in January. Cause remember when they were trying to pass off that lie and then we were like, mm, well, actually they were saying first it was like a month, but then we're like, mm, January, you went on a couple's trip or as Ariana calls it a fest uh, to big bear with Rachel Raquel, Tom Sandy, Butt, Tom Schwartz and creepy Joe. Okay, Joel the Creep, allegedly. Thank you, DGF. Sandoval thinks he's William Hurt in Body Heat 81. <laughs> he thinks he's lots of people. And Freddie Mercury, yeah, he just steals people's style. He's just not uh, creative at all. So Sandoval is telling Andy Cohen that, okay, uh, okay, okay, after Guy's Night, and then like Rachel, like, dude, like, seriously, like, dude, I was dipping out, and Rachel Raquel was like, okay, she was like, hey, what are you doing later? Uh, what's your penis doing? And I was like, I don't know. What's your vajay doing? And then we just kind of like did it. And then Andy asked, okay, so, okay, so you did it once. Okay. And then you didn't do it again until before BravoCon. Um, so by the time BravoCon happened, you were already having sex again with Rachel Raquel. So you're like having an affair. And Andy's like, I remember being at BravoCon and I was listening to your shitty band, your shitty dick dick band. And you were screaming in the mic like, put it me while I'm bursting two flames. You know, you were just like, whatever you do. And the rest of the band was like actually playing music. Um, and Rachel Raquel's in the front and Ariana's in the front. And you're standing on stage and you see your mistress and your girlfriend I mean, how does that make you feel? What are you thinking? Did it get you off? 
And he's like, oh, no, my God, no, what am, what do you think I am? A freaking she, oh, gross. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> of course I got him off. But his acting is so bad. Him and his white nail polish. I mean, you might as well just have, like, broken pink nail polish like me, bro. He's just like, got his cardigan on, gold chain, hair slicked back. He's like, oh, God, no. Poor for Rama. No way. He... Every time he lies like this and every time he's confronted, he treats it like a middle school kid with behavioral issues, you know, getting mad at his mom. Like, God, you bitch, I don't want to flush my own poops. Like, that's how he acts when he's confronted with just questions that totally make sense and are logical. Okay. Um, yes, hit that like, 472 in the chat. Let's get the likes to match the live number. But he's like, God, no, Andy, God, you're so gross. Yuck, I would never. And I'm like, Tom, save it. Save it for, save it for your next victim because we don't believe it. And Ariana, you know, she's asked, you know, are, are there situations that you think – you could have picked up on did you miss and she was like honestly i'm most surprised and i miss so much about rachel raquel because she's like no uh, offense andy but men are trash and andy was like mm, yeah i mean i i do agree with that men are trash she's like but rachel raquel when i would never do that to a girlfriend because you i gotta remember whenever we let up on these two just remember that this Rachel Raquel was their friend, like their close friend, like stayed at their house. They took Rachel Raquel under their wing. Tom acted like a big brother to her. Now, Auntie Jolene advice. If some guy is like, you're like my little sister, he's trying to have sex with you. He's trying to have sex with you. He's gross and a pervert because if he's not your brother, he's not your brother. Okay. You don't have to be my brother. I don't need a brother. I have a brother. Or maybe you don't have a brother, but you don't want, why do, why do, why do guys that are all, that are trying to bang on the low always be like, Oh, she's like my little sister. Ew. First of all, get some therapy, work through those things. That's illegal in most states, pretty sure. But also red flag. So if someone's like, oh no, she's like my little sister. If you have a boyfriend who's hanging out with a, another woman and you feel uncomfortable about it and he ever says, she's like my sister, break up with them, break up with them, stab his iPhone. It's all, it's, it's gotta be done because he, there is some wiener, vag stuff going on first or he's trying he is definitely trying so ariana's just like oh i really thought rachel raquel was my friend you know it's just i would never do that to one of my friends this is like I, oh my goodness uh and i get that but it is almost sad that we expect it from men but we don't expect it from women so i would say hold men to the same standards we hold women OK, we got to start it now going forward because I am so tired. I get what Ariana is saying, but it is sad that that is how society, how we have to deem it like, yeah, the guy cheated on me, but he's trash. I mean, they're going to you know, put their peepees in anything. They're going to dip their wick in, you know, wherever they want. Um, but the girl, she was my friend. And it's like, no, hold the men just as accountable as the women. OK, and I get it. Rachel Raquel, that's some dirty dog shit. Ariana was like a big sister to you. And that is not in a creepy way. Okay. Because Ariana, you know, when, when women say that, we're not trying to bang. We're not, I've never, no, it's just not a woman thing. This is not what we do. We don't say, oh, she's like a little sister to me. Ooh, ugh, ugh, I want to get it. You know, that's not, we don't do that. that. That doesn't turn us on. We're not gross like that. But some guys, the problematic ones, they always seem to use that. Excuse. So Ariana really treated Rachel Raquel like family. She she stood up for her. She protected her. She w opened up. She was vulnerable in front of her. She opened up her home to her only for her to in it. She had intercourses on Ariana's furniture. Rachel Raquel is sleeping on Ikea. God bless Ikea. It has furnished me through the years. But Ariana has some nice shit. Okay, so Rachel Raquel should be over there. I mean, she should have to buy that. She should have to pay her outright for getting her juices on it. It is not good. Thank you, Lala, for the super chat. Hi, Jolene. We want to give you a little, oh, that's so sweet. Housewarming gift. We are so happy for you, Chell and producer Tilly. Thank you so much. I am beyond happy being in our new home. I love it. It's so comfortable. I can't wait to just keep making it ours and get a couch that actually fits. Because right now we just took all of our West Hollywood apartment furniture because the last place we lived at came furnished. So we took, we got apartment furniture in a home, which 
if anyone's ever done that before. It's kind of funny. So thank you, Lala. That is so generous of you. And Jody, welcome to the Lean Team. Thank you for joining the YouTube membership. And Nana's in the chat, everybody. Shout out to my mom, Nana. Okay. So we talked. They talked about you know that uh, with Rachel Raquel and Ariana, and then uh, Tom Sandoval in his pre-interview with Andy Cohen. Did you guys see how he was trying to set the tone? He was trying to set the narrative to be like, I just like, dude, like, I just thought like. It just like, dude, like, 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 it wasn't fair that me and Ariana were actually doing, Ariana, doing bad. We actually weren't doing good, Andy. God, we weren't, okay? And I actually told the the showrunner, like, dude, like, I was like, dude, showrunner, dude, like, um, I feel like me and Ariana are, like, faking it. And it's, like, not fair to the other cast. So, like, uh we really we haven't been doing it i like lost my mojo so fuck my friend so fuck my friend then so that's my favorite line i just i lost my mojo so fuck my friend so fuck my friend fuck my friend fuck my friend then get your mojo back get your mojo back so tom sandoval was definitely trying to like ariana's just like really secretive like dude she's like really secretive and i want to be open no tom no 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 you have been called out for about this by Jax and other cast members for years saying that you actually don't share your life. And Ariana made it pretty clear that that was something that you kind of coached her on as well, is that, you know, Tom wanted to roll, I guarantee it, with being the narrator of the show. He didn't want to involve his real life because his real life is Dexter-esque, okay? And Dexter, at least he killed the bad guys. You know what I mean? Oh my goodness. So, he, of course, he didn't want to out his real life that's dark as hell. And he wanted to push the focus on the other men. They're all problematic. So he was like, no, go over there, go over there. So he, so that's why you never, you didn't see a bunch of Tom and Ariana when they first got together. Obviously there was, you know, the, the kind of love triangle with Kristen and that. But other than that, it, it seemed like I mean, Ariana was open about her emotions and things like that, but De Tom wasn't open. So it was you, Tom. I believe Tom Sandy Butt was the one that was behind that because he, you didn't see Ariana necessarily year after year pushing off blame. Ariana, you saw her progress as a person. You saw her um, become, you saw her mature. And it was quite beautiful from when we first saw her when she was like, when, you know, Justice for Miami Girl, Miami Girl was like, we did do it. And Tom's like, no, we did. And then she's like, F you. And then F you. And then Ariana's like, mm, please do not tell my boyfriend to F off. Don't, <laughs> don't F off my boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> um, but since then, I mean, we've seen Ariana be able to navigate and have friendships with, you know, Katie and actually advocate for her and have Katie's back and stand up to Tom and be like, Tom, you're acting ridiculous. Don't talk to Katie like that. Where Tom just continued to devolve as a human, in my opinion. He continued to be very immature. He continued to attack women. He continued to be me, 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 me. And, you know, he's the victim and he's the best and he's the number one guy in the group and everyone's shitting on him and it should just be the Tom and Tom show. And luckily it is not. Thank you, chicken head. What freaks me out is knowing Rachel, I know, had at sex at Sheena's house all over. She had to be told to clean up after herself. She had intercourses on Sheena's counter. Okay. And not having a new house right now, and I have an island and a counter that I love. And if some hoors, Rachel Raquel and her partner, the hoors, put their juices looses on there i would be so mad i would be like you better go get me a new piece of quartz you you, you she'd have to go buy it for me there aren't enough bleach wipes that can bleach away that stain yes yeah, so we've seen ariana progress we haven't seen tom progress so it's very it was so gross to see him try to push this narrative that it was Ariana that kept it secret. Tom wanted everyone to believe he was a prisoner in this relationship and that Ariana held him captive, not only in secrecy, but also held her mental health over him. Like, ooh, he was creating something that was so unbelievable. But given the right edit and this news not coming out about Rachel Raquel could have worked. 
because unfortunately the Toms were, you know, they were edited to be favorites on the show um, where the Jaxes and the James and stuff, we saw all of their, you know, scars and dirtiness and, and cheating. But I mean, just think about it. Schwartz couldn't stop cheating on Katie. I mean, and that was a joke. They literally laughed about that. And it was like, ah, oh, it's just Schwartz. He's a makeout king. You can't be a makeout king when you're married. But people are like, oh, it's Schwartz. I mean, they got away with murder. So had this not come out, who knows what production could have hid? Who knows what editing could have hid? Who knows what production, I mean, especially if they didn't know, they would just go on giving him a good edit. And I, and like we've talked about before, Tom Sandy, but I really believe he was like, I run this shit. Okay. Jax is gone. Kristen's gone. Stassi's gone. Those are all the people who uh, challenged me. Okay. So I can get rid of Ariana because it ain't about her. It's about me. He thought he was the star in that relationship. Oh, Tom. Oh, that's what happens when you believe you're on hype. No, the best thing about you was always Ariana. Without Ariana co-signing you, you're just a dumbass with a bad voice. You're just another, uh, you know, misogynist. You're, you're just another dick, LA dickhead. You're just another Macter. It was Ariana that made you likable. It was Ariana that we could look to and be like, oh, well, she's smart. She's cool. She's got her shit together. She's evolving. I guess she sees something in him. Okay, he's cool. It was Lisa. The women of this show kept you afloat and how quick you are to throw these women away. Just like you did with Ariana. Now, Lisa, I know you're a fan of the channel. Hi, Lisa Vanderpump. I want to give you a bit of advice. Do you notice that what I just said, Tom Sandy Butt, is brought up and lifted and given career charisma uh, from women? That's how it is from you and Ariana, okay? And now look what he's done to Ariana. And also look what he's done to you. So when Lisa sits there trying to make excuses for him throughout this reunion, do you see what he did all season? He's been trying to separate himself from Lisa Vanderpump. He's been throwing little jabs at Lisa and be like, don't know, Lisa don't have to be under Lisa anymore. When Lisa actually was looking to help them and give them money back because he's taken money out of his mom's retirement, which he was asked about that and he hasn't paid her back yet. And he was like, but uh, like, dude, like my mom, like wouldn't give it to me if she didn't have it. She's such a bitch. She's such a bitch. She's like, God, like, dude, you understand. I'm, I'm going to like dip out and give it back to her eventually. God, dude. I mean, this guy. So he's, so all the reasons he has any bit of relevancy, success, anything in the business is due to women. Mommy, Ariana, and um, Lisa Vanderpump. Well, Ariana, look how horribly he treated her and was ready to throw her away. And then look with mommy. Not going to pay mommy back. Mommy's going to have to suffer on her fixed income. Poor firefighter mommy. I want to open a strip mall bar. It's my choice. And I'd be in a karaoke band, even though I can't sing. Now with Lisa Vanderpump, he's always trying to, you know, put her down and be like, oh, God, we have to, to go to Lisa. Where it seems like Schwartz is very grateful to Lisa, almost in a creepy way. We've talked about that before, but. Hmm. Um, but Sandoval is so quick. And Lisa even confronted him. She's like, I didn't like that you said that about me. But Lisa, I've been there for you. I've given you 5%. And Andy's like, 5%? She's like, it's $5 million, Andy. Okay? And they put in 50000 each. So, I mean, that's pretty generous. And they don't do anything. They're just a face for this. So they literally don't have to do any of the business stuff and they can make money off Tom Tom. But yet he still wants to throw under the bus. Sir, you would have no business. You would have no Tom Tom and you would have no failed shorts and skeezies if it wasn't for Lisa Vanderpump. And you wouldn't have, obviously, you know, likability um, and be a fan favorite without Ariana. So you lost that. And without mommy's money, you couldn't even fail at the strip mall bar. So this dude needs to know his role. He needs to know that who runs the world? Girls. Who doesn't? Tom Sandy, but you don't run nothing. You don't run nothing. You run yourself into the ground. But Tom Sandoval, we just learned it more in this season and especially this reunion, how much he hates women. I honestly, in my opinion, you guys are free to have yours. I think he does not like women. 
There is no way someone who acts the way he does, behaves the way he does, and has these strong, wonderful women who have his back, and he's so quick to shit on them and treat them like they're replaceable. That is not someone who respects women. That is not someone who likes women. And we've seen him, you know, go off about, you know, being a cis male. And basically what he likes about women are their vaginas. So he just looks at him like a giant vagina. I mean, that's all <laughs> I can think because really, you know, he's told us before that he wants to yell at women, but he can't because he's a cis male. And so that really pisses him off. The new thing is that, you know, as a cis male, um, Did you say cis? Is your voice yelled, whatever you feel entitled to do. But as a cis male, as a straight male, if I was a woman, I could do that. If I was a gay male, I could do that. But as a straight male, if I raise my voice, it's wrong. He just can't raise his voice to women. He just, he's so mad about that. Of all the struggles, Tom Sandy butts, I just want to yell at a woman. He doesn't like him. He doesn't like him. He just doesn't like him. Mm -mm. He's, he's trying to pretend, but really he doesn't. So then he like, you know, he's crying. And then Andy compares it to Ariana when they're doing their little uh, pre reunion interview. And he's like, so Tom says, you know, that you guys weren't sharing with the, you know, with the show and you had your relationship kind of, um, did you feel that you shared? She's like, I feel like I share my life a hundred percent. Okay. Um, Tom, of course, he's going to say that he has to say that. And this is where Tom Sandoval, I, I honestly, I don't feel sorry for you, but it's like, mm, I, I just, I feel embarrassed for you because you really thought in all these interviews, Howie Mandel, this one, when you talk to TMZ, the reunion, you think you can outsmart Ariana. You think your brain works at the speed her brain works. You think you, I, I mean, you, you're not even, a, a, you're not even a tenth as smart as Ariana. You're, 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 mm, bro, you're vapor. No offense. No offense, all offense. But it's just, you see him trying to like work his magic like he's some crazy cult leader or something. Um, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Uh, like when Ariana tells us because what she's telling us, it appears to be the truth. And she also appears to be able to shut down all of your bullshit. So, mm, I mean, I'm just like, I really am embarrassed for him. Like, it is cringy. It's cringy. Okay, so then he cries a little bit. The pre-season, he's like, am I nervous? Yeah, dude, I'm nervous. And, uh, you know, I'm scared. Because, like, dude, I'm ready to face it. Because I want to be able to have sex with Rachel Raquel, like, out in the open. I want to be able to do it, like, everywhere, dude. Dude, dude. So then everyone comes out. Tom Sandoval comes out. And Ariana's like, mm -hmm, he looks like shit. And, was like, she, and that's always the best. She's like, Ariana's faces this reunion were everything. She's like, mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. And everyone was just ready to pounce on Tom Sandoval. And that's exactly, you know, what a lot of us wanted. Because otherwise he's not being held accountable. Lisa's trying to bail him out. Tom Schwartz is trying to bail him out. Um, some parts of America and media, I am so tired of hearing this narrative that mob mentality just because there's a group of people who agree that someone's behavior is really poor and they're not doing a good job of actually being um, sorry, of actually showing remorse, does not mean that that is mob mentality. There are certain situations where majority of people will find something to be wrong. We'll say, oh, yeah, that is something I, in my own moral, you know, compass, find to be disgusting behavior. Oh, and how he's acting after said disgusting behavior, also disgusting. And voicing that is not mob mentality. But that is the one thing I see that really people try to put that out there. I feel like that becomes propaganda for then anyone who thinks this dude is acting like a dickhead. For us to somehow feel bad. Why should I feel bad? He's making money off this. This guy's on tour. He's on tour. He behaved this badly and he went on tour. And he can't even sing. This man is selling tickets. Some tickets. Is on a stage. Pretending to be a singer. 
or Freddie Mercury, like you guys are saying. <laughs> so some things are universally, universally evil. Like Natashki say, some things are. And you know what? This will pass. It will. All things pass. You know, memories are long, but they're also short, okay? Especially in pop culture. But accountability needs to be taken, okay? There is a path to redemption, but this guy just wants the free and easy. It's over. Big deal. God, dude. No, no, no. It is okay. I am giving you permission to have your opinion and your feelings. Not everyone is a crazy cuckoo bananas person who's out there and going to threaten someone. And they throw those minority of cases out there for us to feel bad and go, Me, we should move on. No, you're on a television show. It's airing right now. We're going to have opinions about it. Okay. You acted like a dickhead. And that is okay for us to say and to feel. You don't get out of this. OK, there's no. And when I see other other women doing this, I'm like, no, he already has enough women sticking up for him and he'll just shit on you anyways, just like he does all the other women who have helped him in his life. OK, Rachel Raquel. Well, let's get back into the um, rant over for now. Rachel Raquel has to be in a trailer watching this and she's like. I hope I can't wait for him to answer that question. You know, she's in the trailer because she has a restraining order against Sheena, which is so ridiculous. The dumbest thing ever. And I'm just like, so there she is. She's got a sweater on. She's like, I want Tom to answer that question. Tom says that we're going to go to Carlsbad and have a vacation. Is that in the United States? She, this uh, this is the look of I, I, I when I look at Rachel Raquel and her reactions, she has the complete opposite. I feel like of the reaction you should have when people are calling her like a liar. <laughs> she's just like she's dead faced about it. And then um, the only reactions you really see is when Ariana says that, no, we actually were sexual in January. And she is like, yeah, Ariana and Tom were quite sexual. And she's like. And then, you know, when you see Ariana so hurt by this betrayal, she's just like, rolls her eyes. But when Tom Schwartz says that the kiss he had with Rachel Raquel gave him like, I forget what his dumb ass said, but it like breathed new life into him or gave him, gave him a little bit of mojo. She was like, mm. Rachel Raquel's being a pick me. She's being a pick me right now. And it's not going to work well, Rachel Raquel. You're 28. Ugh, there, you can, you can change. You're young enough. Tom Sandoval, he is like 76. Okay. How many 76 year olds do you know that change? They're like, this is who I am. This is who I'm always going to be. This is who Jesus is going to meet. Okay. When I'm like, what's up, God? This is me. Like that is, that's who he is. Um, so Rachel Raquel is just like, hi, oh, look at everyone's there. Well, I'm hoping for the best, but expecting the best. Uh, um, <laughs> and then Ariana says that, you know, there, she, she got a great night of sleep. Normally she doesn't get a great night of sleep. I'm like, yeah, girl, because you don't have to worry just think of all the pressure Ariana had for nine seasons or how many ever seasons she was at the reunion. Well, it would have been nine. Yeah. How she had to, how many times did you see Ariana in reunions past have to go? What Tom means is when he's like, dude, like seriously, like women, like stupid, like God, like Jack's like, what God, stupid Christine, who cares? Yeah. Did I dude? like, yeah. Did I live with twin sisters who were still in high school when I was well into my twenties? Yeah, I did. But like, I didn't know. Did I have sex with one of them? Yeah, but they were seniors or they graduated. Remember that? Remember that, Tom Sandoval? Remember that reunion where it came out that you allegedly lived with high schoolers and one of them you might have done it with? I don't know. I would, I don't know. I would be looking outside for the police or Chris Hansen. I would not, because that seems real creepy. Just picking up what? You're like 24, 25 years old and you're living with teenage sisters? Huh? What? Huh? What in the Degrassi is going to? I don't know. But remember that? That's crazy. That's crazy. So, um, 
so Ariana, you know, she she finally got good sleep because she doesn't have to explain for this man anymore. She doesn't have to um, translate his idiocracy, you know. Then we see um, Andy go, Schwartz, this is the first time you're not sitting next to Katie. And Schwartz is like, oh, oh, I got, I, oh yeah, that's, that's a little different. And James Kennedy right away is like, he didn't even, he didn't even notice. He didn't even notice. And then Schwartz is like, well, it's kind of sad, but I'm okay with it. You know, I got these super cool glasses. It's like, I look like pebbles from Flintstone. Super cool. I'm kitschy. I'm the quirky weird guy. So I never have to take ownership for my actions. No, Katie and I were doing great. We are just, you know, we're being friendly. Uh, I keep creepy Joe away from her. We have dog cussing. Katie's like, no, 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 we don't. We don't. We actually aren't on good terms. I actually hate him. He's like, not my friend. I don't like him. I don't like you. Yeah, we're great. We're great. Katie, please stop. We're doing great, Andy. We're really, we're really good. Actually, no, I, no, I don't. I'm, I'm never going to talk to him again. I'm not going to cut his armpit hair. Like he's really gross. Like he's like TV dinner gross. Like he's very yuck. Mm, Katie, mm, you know, so Schwartz is just doing the Schwartz thing where Katie's rolling her eyes like, no, we were never friends. We're not, you're not respecting my boundaries. You're not being a good person to me. Uh -uh, I don't like it. And he's like, mm, we're good. We're good. And she's like, no. So exactly what he did in their marriage, you know, he's like, we put a lot of work into it. When do you have time? Because Andy asked the question about, you know, was the business worth it, Schwartz? And Schwartz has to go, oh, God, I mean, oh, oh God, ah, oh, geez, I mean, oh, what you got, ooh, bah, ooh, ee, bing, bah, ah, I mean, how do you, ooh, how do I answer that? I, da. And Lisa's like, you answer it by taking your head out of your ass and you have an actual opinion. Ah, uh, I mean, ah, ooh, and Katie's like, he just, he, he didn't prioritize me, um, at all in our marriage. And so I had to finally say, this is not working and file for divorce. Schwartz is like, yeah, I just, I woke up one day and it was like, my armpit hair was really long. And I was like, where's Katie? And she was just like gone, dude. And then, yeah, I don't know. It was really macabre. It was so macabre. Uh, I mean, this guy, he's, he's willfully clueless. That's like his character that he plays. But Katie's just like, no, I'm not putting up with this uh, anymore. And you did not balance uh, you did not prioritize me. You couldn't balance anything. And he's like, Oh, Katie, I'm sorry. Uh, you think that, but you're wrong. I'll let you speak. So he interrupts her so that he can mansplain her feelings. Like, thank you. Thank you. Schwartz. Thank you for nothing. Uh, and then he's just, you know, going off about, uh, Katie, have you ever tried to open a, um, strip mall bar before? Cause it's really hard. It's in a strip mall and the entrance looks like an exit and you have to go around Franklin and you have to take a left at the street. If you're coming from a certain way, I don't know East versus West Katie, but you know what I'm talking about. And there's a Gelson's across the street and you can adopt a dog next door. And it's like, it would be better as a pizza shop, but we made it into a kitschy bar called Sharts and skeezies. All right. So, and Katie's like, dude, it's not like you're doing, you know, it's not like you're saving lives or curing cancer or helping children. It's a bar. And he's like, oh. <laughs> I loved it. I love that Katie is just owning him. Like she's just like, no, boom, shutting him down. Katie and Ariana are a freaking force. They are a force and they, we've already seen it, but they're going to continue to thrive without these baby men. I mean, these men held them back. And these men never progress and they never grow and they can barely open up their strip mall bar. And Katie and Ariana are just thriving. They're booked. They're busy. They're getting some good loving by some men who actually know how to throw it down, throw it in, whatever the kids are saying these days. And actual, I'm sure like smart guys for once. You're not smart. Not You're not smart. You're not smart. You're not smart. So I was very happy um, to see Katie really tell Schwartz how it is, you know, because he always wants to control the conversation when it comes to him and Katie. He always wants to make her out to be, you know, uh, the bad guy. It's something that unfortunately, you know, he's gotten away with for a very long time. And, 
Katie has, uh, you know, she's been criticized very heavily and, uh, we've, you know, through our own, uh, societal misogyny and stuff, it's like, we believed some of us, I mean, I have to check myself regularly for my own internalized misogyny. Like, why, why did I ever think Katie was the problem when Schwartz clearly is like a man baby and he sucks and he's trying this nice guy act, but it's like a nice nasty and he's indecisive and he's never once had her back. So why, why did I, did I, you know, so it, it's, it's good to see these kind of things because it's always good to check ourselves because we're constantly conditioned to look at as women as the problem. It's like, Oh God, Katie's probably a bitch. That's what's going on. It's like, no, Katie's not a bitch at all. Um, she just isn't putting up with his bullshit and he is a baby man and baby men are not fun to deal with. And she's asking her spouse to have her back, which is a totally reasonable request. She's also asking her spouse not to cheat on her um, and to, you know, put her before his uh, shorts and skeezies business partner. But he's like, God, uh, I can't. Uh, uh. Yeah, justice for Katie. I mean, there's a lot of times I think now looking back at episodes, I'm like, holy shit, Katie was given a really bad deal when it comes to um, this situation and when it comes to editing and when it comes to public perception. Uh, speaking of which, there was a point where Tom Sandoval kind of fell out of his sad boy character. And I think, cause I really do think Tom Sandy Butt thinks I can come back from this. It's just a matter of time. You know, I got this. Uh, and when Sheena said that Brock cut all of his hair off, there was this moment where, you know, the whole group's like, oh, my God, no way. And Tom Sand Sandy Butt's like, oh, really? What? Oh, my God, dude. And it's like, no, you're not friends with them like that anymore. You're not friends with them like that anymore. And he kind of dropped that sad boy um, thing he's got going on and had this, like, what probably would have been his natural reaction um, to uh, – to Brock cutting his hair, which, you know, he was really close friends with them. So of course he would um, be like, no way. Do you know he tried, he fell back into that act that he did. Okay. Now my, one of my favorite parts, I have so many favorite parts is when Andy's like, okay, Tom Sandoval, do you have anything, you know, you want to say to Ariana and the group, anything you want to, he's like, yeah, like, dude, like I would, uh, I would like to like, um, I just, I just, I, I, wanna, I just want to thank everybody for being there for Hari, ha, Hana, Hari, 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 ha, Hana. I want to thank you guys so much. And they just pounced. The rest of the cast was like, put yourself together, dude. Quit being a pussy. You're being a pussy. And everyone, and this is probably one of the very few times you're ever going to hear me saying, hell yes, call his ass out and uh, make, make fun of him for showing emotion because it's fake freaking emotion because like ariana said oh you've been victim blaming me and yelling at me for how long non-stop since this news broke but now the cameras are on and you're gonna cry they like, pull yourself together man pull yourself together i loved when james kennedy and ariana, ariana's like you're not the fucking victim you're not the victim bro thank you joe for the super chat thank you uncreepy joe Holmgren, uh, Schwartz always throws crap at Katie, right? Not cheating on your wife is not, it's not a big ask. Schwartz was the shittiest husband. If there was a shitty husband award, Schwartz wouldn't even get it because he was shittier than the shittiest husband. He was the shittiest husband that ever shitty. Like he's so bad. I would hate to be married to him. You're cutting his armpit hair and he's cheating on you, bro. Uh-uh. If I am touching your armpits, you better keep your dick in your pants. You are keep it in your khakis. All right. Keep it in your little boy shorts. I don't have time for it. It was, yes. Uh, Real Expat says, I loved it. No one was letting, no, they shut it down because he, okay, here's the thing, you guys. So I get very hyped, as you guys know, about this stuff. But uh, Sandoval, okay. Back to Sandoval, not Schwartz, if I said Schwartz, but Schwartz sucks. Yeah, he was a shitty husband. Back to Sandoval. Sandoval wanted to immediately elicit some sympathy and emotion, but also notice how he says, I want to thank you. 
guys for having Ariana's back through this. There is something about him saying it like that. Like, first of all, Tom Sandy, but why wouldn't they have Ariana's back? Almost as like he was saying it, like he still had some control over how they would react to Ariana. Almost as if he he's saying, thank you for having her back. I mean, I know you're her friends and everything, but you're not. You're really my friend. So I just appreciate you being there for her in her time of need. First of all, what are the tears for? You should have had tears a long time ago, and it should have been for what you did. Not for having Ariana's back. Of course, they're going to have Ariana's back. They love her. That's their friend. You're not their friend. You're someone they tolerated. And now notice how everybody picked a side and it's not yours. The only one you got is Schwartz. That's it. And because he's stuck. He feels like he's stuck with you. But there was something so, so, so toxic and gross about the way he was. Uh, who? What are you giving an acceptance speech for people having her back? What are you doing? What? It was so strange to me. What? Who would say, I just want to thank you for being there for being there. What are you? Huh? What? No, talk about you and how you shit on her. And of course we're going to be there for her. This has nothing to do with you. And we don't need your thanks. We don't need your anything. We don't need your tears. We just need you to be accountable. And we need you to change and be a better person and not be on tour. We need you to never sing on a stage again. That's what we, I loved Ariana goes, the sad sack is fucking bullshit. And she turned, I mean, Ariana, boom, boom, pow. You had a baddie. You had a woman that had it all. You really did, Tom Sandy Butt. And you threw it away so you could fake cry on stage and have sex with a 28-year-old. Who eventually, they all turned 29, Tom. They all turned 29, Tom. Oh, my goodness. Ariana was lit. One thing that Schwartz was right about. Ariana eviscerated him. And we're only in part one of the reunion. It was so... I. I felt, I felt like a reborn. I felt like I was baptized in Ariana's evisceration. It was beautiful. It was beautiful to see her take her power. I loved it. And they all backed her up. They all backed her up. They're like, no, you're not the victim. Shut up. You're being a pussy. No, no, no. And then Lisa's like, you guys let him. It's like, Lisa, stop, stop. Lisa, go, go in the back, cash the checks, do what you do. I love you, girl. I do. But no, we do he doesn't, he's 49 years old. He doesn't need someone to bail him out. He has to bail himself out. I mean, the dude is never going to freaking learn. Also, I would be, bye. You can, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do business with that guy anymore. I really wouldn't. I wouldn't let him bring down my brand. You own most of the Tom Tom. buy his ass out or whatever you got to do. Give him his little 50 K back and, uh, or give it to his mom because she, She's the one that's, you know, it's really her money. I mean, and change the name to Ariana and Katie's or just, I wouldn't have any, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do business with any of the Toms. I wouldn't want their, them two man babies. You want them on the bar and we hope it's so easy to change the name, rebrand. People would be here for it. The thing is they're so disliked right now and their behavior is so appalling that people would love a rebrand. It's only 5%, Lisa. You are a smart businesswoman. This makes no sense. But I think she thinks she can, you know, get them. How interesting for next season, Lisa parting ways with the Toms. The Toms having to figure it out on their own. And the women rising in their power. Lala, Katie, Ariana, Sheena, they all come up. And we see something about her. We see women really making moves. And the man babies having to pick up their own pieces. And not being, getting cleaned up you know, getting their ass wiped by women. So, I mean, I was mad when Lisa was like stopping them. No, but James was like, he's acting out <laughs> Sandy butt. And I was here for it. And Lisa's like, James. And Andy's like, James, stop it. And, you know, James is like, he's freaking crocodile tears. And it is crocodile's tears. So then James is like, huh, you know, making fun of him. And Tom Sandy, but it's like, okay, I won't cry as much, but I just want to say I appreciate you guys being there for Ariana. Ariana. For like Ariana, dude. Is that her name? 
It's not Raquel. Ariana. Thank you for being there for Ariana. I just want to say that. Thank you, working girl 200 for the super chat. Tom has shown himself to be emotionally impotent. Ooh, good word. Emotionally impotent, a poor actor, and just plain sleazy. That's why he has shards and skeezies. Maybe I should change it to shards and sleazies. But seriously, I mean, Tom's like, what was going on in our relationship? No one deserves it. No one deserves to have that happen. His choice of words are so telling in this man's problematic personality and all of the issues going on with him. And Ariana goes, oh, no, not today, skeezy. She said, listen, nothing happened. It's or what did, how did she say it? She said that. Um, yeah, nothing happened. You did it. You did it. You did it. Skeezies, you did it. And but he's still trying to remove himself from this problem he created. And that's what we see this toxic dude doing. And Ariana just checks his ass like, uh-uh. You did. He's like, oh, but you know what I mean? Like, God, Ariana, Ariana, come on, Ariana. We weren't having sex. I lost my mojo. So fuck my friend. I, got, I, just, I lost my, oh, God. I didn't even recognize my wiener. So fuck my friend then. So fuck my friend. Oh, Ariana was not here for it, but he definitely tries to remove himself from the thing he did and the look he gave her. I wish I had my screen share, you guys. Oh, my God. It was, he was like, Maybe I can add an overlay of it. He just, and that is the look of a man that just, like I said, he don't like her. And when he says in this that he loved, oh, I love you. And I'm, I'm sorry. Finally, this sorry, this very sorry, sorry comes out. But he looks at her here. I'll show you. I'll show you this look. And it was just, it was like, oh, oh, oh. This is a, this is similar to the look. I'm trying, let me try to find the the look I'm talking about, but he just looked at her. Oh, here it is. Oh God. It is haunting. It is like Dateline NBC haunting. It is a whole 2020 mess. Okay. Let me, I got to get rid of one of these to be able to, I can only have so many overlays. This is where I like to screen share because StreamYard only gives me so many. All right. Let me pull it up. It's haunting. This is what? Look at this. Oh, <gasps> this is him looking over like, <gasps> Well, I guess that's the same as the last one, only younger. Gosh darn it. But it's very similar to that. I have it pulled up on my screen right now. I just can't share it. But you guys know what I'm talking about. If you go to the, if you watch on Peacock and you go to the, uh, I think it's like 14 minutes in, 14 minutes and 16 seconds. He's got sweat dripping down. His freshly painted just hair for men uh, dye job. He's like looking at her like, ugh. Just giving her like a death stare and it's just haunting. It's just the worst. It's just like psycho side eye. Ugh. It just, ugh. it's like, oh, send it, send it, send it, send it. Send a liar. He is 76. Send a bull is 90 and he's old. Send a bull is 90. Send a bull is 90. We can have some fun with uh, that there, but he's just mad. I'm sorry that for doing the one thing I said I wouldn't do, and I did it in the worst way possible. I love you, and I apologize. How dare you tell her you love her? That No, what, what in the gaslighting, lying piece of liar is that? You do not love her. You're off telling Rachel Raquel you love her. You can't love everybody and treat them like shit. That is not how you treat someone you love. You don't love her. You don't respect her. You don't care for her. You wanted to throw her under the bus. You wanted to make us believe she was going to kill herself. And that's why you couldn't leave because she said she was going to hurt herself. It's like, bro, give me a break. And then James and Lala are like, mm, that didn't land for me. No, it didn't hit for me. Lala's like, I wasn't even listening. And then Ariana tells us what we already knew because we heard from Kristen Doty on her podcast. And we talked about it here before that Tom Sandy, but uh, was treating her horribly and victim blaming her. And, you know, they still have to live in the home and he's staying in the guest room. And she is, you know, trying to keep her distance and process this and not be, you know, re-traumatized. Every time he just decides to like walk in, they're trying to have a middle 
person. And now they do. He's finally allowing his assistant to be that person to say, Hey, I'm going to use the gym now. Hey, I'm going to use the uh, pool now so that they don't have to have these awkward run-ins, but they could still coexist in this home that they both have to get out of. But Ariana told us what Kristen Doty already told us is that Tom in the beginning, after this all came out and Ariana finds out that her friend and her partner, her life partner, uh, are having this torrid affair right in front of her, basically. Every time she turns around banging in her house and humiliating her, he comes home and yells at the people who are supporting her. So for him to then get on some kind of, you know, like emotional soapbox, go, thank you for helping Ariana. She's like, no, bro, you came home and you yelled at everyone who was supporting me in the house. And when we asked if we could have a go between for us in the home, instead of you, you know, just showing up and you give me some space to process, you yelled at the people that were supporting me. And you said, no, you said, this is my house. I do what I want. I do what I want. And so now you want to try to have us believe that somehow you care. So it was, it was great for Ariana. Just be like, no, he victim blamed me hundred percent of the way. I don't believe anything that comes out of his mouth. He's a fucking liar and he can go straight to hell. He can go to hell. So then, okay. So here comes Lala and Lala's coming in and she's like, listen, this man, Lauren from Utah came out. She was like, shots fired. Okay. Boom. Salt Lake city. And she said, listen, I know this type of guy. I was in a relationship with this type of guy. Tom Sandoval is Randall in 10 years. All right. And she says that he's dangerous. And he's like, oh, la, la, that's ridiculous. What's ridiculous about it? What is so ridiculous to say that he's a dangerous human being, a liar and a serial cheater, someone who can so blatantly hurt others and yet pass off the blame. Someone who can create a narrative about someone he's supposed to care about and out these fake instances of mental health and a possible um, issue where he's, I mean, he was on a podcast, Howie Mandel, I'll never forget, unfortunately, hashtag please forget, um, saying that the person he loves who he just betrayed that she was saying she was going to take her own life. So she was like holding him hostage with threats of harming herself. What's not dangerous? We see these type of men. This is a, this, in my opinion, again, everything I say is alleged and uh, it's all true except for the parts that are false. I mean, this is a guy who makes people believe what he wants them to believe, you know, and little groomer vibes, little groomer vibes. You know, he tends to like, you know, uh, a younger, because even Ariana's a little younger than him. He likes to be the boss applesauce. And so I would say that, yeah, in in the position that he's in and all of the lies and the deception, it can be dangerous. And the way and his disdain, his outward disdain for any woman who challenges him and even women who bear, who don't even challenge him or just maybe have a different um, opinion or in a different circle than him. It's scary. And I can only, you know, explain Lisa's behavior as, you know, uh, coming from a different generation, unfortunately, a generation, like I told, I talked about earlier that, you know, was conditioned to believe the boys will be boys bullshit. And somehow that women were, you know, uh, we just, we mature faster and blame the woman. And it's just those damn tits, you know, they just, they came popping out and the guys can't control themselves. It's that whole very dangerous, um, uh, you know, kind of, I mean, it's, it's a dangerous conditioning that belief system that somehow women should be punished because they're just these sexual demons. I mean, the titties are out. And once they get their periods, you know, they're just, oh, and guys can't control themselves and guys will be guys and boys will be boys. And, you know, Lisa might not even be fully cognizant of that because that's what she's been, you know, that is definitely her generation. And I mean, trickle down, hopefully it's getting a little better. I don't know. But also she's in a business with them. So she's going to, you know, she literally has their names on one of her businesses. So she is going to thank you. That's what I was looking for. It's an incel narrative. It's a definite incel narrative. Okay. And it's always the woman's fault. 
and you're a dumb slut because I secret because I want to have sex with you and you won't talk to me. It's the same way that women, you know, to say Tom Sandy Butt is dangerous is not odd to me. It's not ridiculous to me one bit because if you are a woman on this earth and you have ever experienced um, trying to uh, present a man with rejection, you've probably, I'm not saying every man, so hashtag not all men, but like we need to say that, but I'm saying there, uh, there's a, there's a big, I mean, there's a reason that women have these shared groups on like Reddit and stuff. There's a reason, um, that, you know, this is unfortunately very common and we see this in a lot of our, you know, crime documentaries. And there's a reason that women feel targeted in this world is because we don't live in a society where men receiving rejection from women is um, normal or they're taught how. Even the what, some of the nicest guys you know still will have to check themselves or can react very negatively and sometimes scarily um, in a very scary way to any sort of rejection. So it's thrown on all of us women to like, let them down easy where if I'm not interested, I'm not interested. If I don't want to smile, I'm not going to smile. If I don't want to talk to you, I'm not going to talk to you. If I'm going to walk right past you, I can walk right past you. Cause that's my prerogative. I owe you nothing, but we live in a world that tells us women and tells men that we owe them something, but we don't owe them anything. And Tom Sandy, but is a prime example of a man that thinks women owe him something. He thinks that he can just, you, I mean, he literally any challenge he gets, he goes into attack mode. So it's, I mean, I don't think it's, I, I think it's on point when she said he's dangerous. Yes, he's dangerous. Look at how irrationally he reacts to a woman merely, a woman merely having another opinion or getting in, even if Lala's in his face like this, how many times have we seen him in women's faces like that? I mean, yes, this type of guy is dangerous. We're now seeing for the first time how Tom Sandy Butt acts when he doesn't get his way and is definitely not the same as when he gets his way. So it is scary being a woman. Um, Sandoval is emotionally and spiritually dangerous. Yes, thank you, HC. LVP only thought of it as, yes, she thought of it as physical terms, but there's so many aspects and layers to the danger we might feel as women uh, when guys like, there's a reason this scandal triggers us so much. There's a reason there are over 600 people here right now on a Sunday afternoon wanting to hear a random 43 year old lady in her new office. Hi. Uh, talk about this. It's because we, we have experience with this. This is triggering because we know this type of dude. We've either come across him. Our friends have come across him. This is all too common. This whole scandal situation is all too common. And the way Tom is behaving now that he has been caught and how he's still trying to pass the buck. I mean, he was literally, he was thinking, I can blame Ariana. I can blame the woman I'm betraying. I can shit all over, you know, her and say, you know, I can cheat on her. I can disrespect her. And then I can get away with it by saying, well, she wasn't giving it up. And what's my penis going to do? My penis was just sitting there. She wasn't touching my penis. She wasn't touching my penis. And it's like, that's why I loved when Ariana was like, that is no excuse for cheating. Any of the things, the excuses you've put out there, whether I wasn't intimate enough or we weren't intimate enough, or I didn't, you didn't think I listened to you, or you somehow thought I didn't want to be in your presence, even though that's a regular thing that he says about women that he's cheating on and wants to be out of the relationship with. Um, the, Cheating is not an excuse. That's not a reason to do that. But he was trying to make it a reason. He was like, no, 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 no. It's not me. It's definitely not me. Tom Sandy Butt refuses to take responsibility and accountability. He wants to blame it on everyone else. He was fully ready to just blame it all on Ariana. And that makes him very dangerous. How he can break the spirits, as we were talking about, of the women in his life and how other women like Lisa Vanderpump will co-sign him.
And she might, she's probably not even thinking of it on that deep of a level, but I wish she was. Because had this happened to Pandora, well, I did hear her husband might not be the greatest allegedly, but I don't know. I think she'd be singing a different tune if this was Pandy. I really do. I find it hard to believe that she would stay in a business relationship or take up for someone like Tom Sandoval if he did this to Pandora. Now, I know that's her daughter and that, you know, heightens the stakes, but I mean, protect all women kind of thing. And you love these, these kids like your kids or so you say. So, mm -mm -mm. Uh, Priya says, I just thought of a theory that Schwartz is a battered wife and Tom is the abusive husband. Yeah. The only one that's ever battered Schwartz is Sandy, but it shows how Sandoval is dangerous to any part. True, true, true. Enchanted says Sandoval was setting up the whole season. Yep. Justifying leaving Ariana and look like the victim. Mm hmm. Then use Rachel Raquel and him as content for next season. Yep. He just climbs on the backs or the fronts, depending on how he likes it, of the women. And he uses them to get ahead, pushes them down to get ahead. You know, Lindsay says not having sex for months that there is an issue would be a red flag for any relationship, but they should have broke up years ago. Yeah, they should have broke up. They should. He, the thing is, Tom, the one thing that we're not, that we're not really even saying, well, maybe Ariana's probably saying it in this reunion is Tom was too chicken shit to just end the relationship. He wanted to come up with every other excuse. Not only was he chicken shit, but I do believe he wanted to carry on this double life. There's something about it. Like Andy asked him earlier and he was like, God, no, that he got off on. Otherwise he would have ended it. If Ariana was so shitty, like he says, and just wasn't touching his wiener, why stay in a relationship with her? You know, he wants us to believe, oh, she was threatening to hurt herself. And Ariana's like, no, I wasn't. There's, he liked it. He liked it. He got off on it. Like Sophie says, yes, he definitely did. And she tells Lala, calm down. Lala goes, I'm not going to calm down. So you definitely, this reunion, you see the kids, the Vander kids standing up to their mom, like all of them for the first time. And we haven't really seen that before because Lisa's always been able to kind of put them in timeouts. Like you won't be on the show anymore. But now they're realizing like, first of all, a lot, most of them are almost 40, if not 76, like Tom Sandy, but, um, or well into their thirties. So they're like, no, I, you can't put me in a timeout. I'm on this show with all respect, with all due respect. No, that's, that's not how it's going to roll anymore. And Lisa found that out the hard way when she tried to put James in this place. And he was like, oh, I'm going to get a timeout. I'm going to get a spanky. And everyone laughed because it's so ridiculous. But this is something that's so bad that it's like James is seeing firsthand, like, yes, have I behaved poorly in the past? Of course. Have you had to reprimand me? Yes. But now when Sandoval could use that same reprimanding, you choose instead to have his back and make excuses for him. So now they're like, no, I'm sorry, Lisa, even you, we're going to tell you if you are supporting the toxic twins. Mm -mm. And Ariana's like, not again, not an excuse uh, to, to cheat on someone. And, you know, the problem with the relationship wasn't that lack of intimacy. It was that he was fucking other people. Because as we found out in the finale, not only was it Miami, or that we know now, not only was it Miami girl, there was other women, other women that he admitted to Sheena, one other, but you know, there's lots of others. And Ariana did say on the Call Her Daddy podcast, which I listened to that whole interview and let me know if you guys want me to do a separate uh, reaction, breakdown, recap and roast of the interview it was really good. Um, and she said that the Billy Lee rumor she doesn't believe. I don't know. Because uh, the other woman they were naming was Billy Lee, who was on the show. And Billy Lee has been seen with Tom Sandoval. And this could be a way for her to get back on the show. She's been seen walking their dogs. Oh, yeah. So, um, so yeah, let me know if you guys want me to do like a little separate video of that because it was it was a really good interview, the call call her daddy interview. Um, Epic says, yes, it's not about the cheating. It was the narcissistic smear campaign. Thank you. Against Ariana. The embryos. Yes, the Halloween costume, the necklace, the inside jokes, the way 
Tom Sandy, but and Tom Schwartz were so willing to humiliate this woman. Cause remember whenever you want to think mm, Schwartz isn't that bad, Tom Schwartz knew and he knew at glamping. She was like, do you know at glamping? Yeah. And you still made those jokes, those cruel jokes about Rachel Raquel going for other people's men. And you knew she was sleeping with your best friend. What did Ariana ever do to Schwartz to deserve that? But then again, what did Katie ever do to Schwartz to deserve him treating her poorly and never having her back? Even in this reunion, Schwartz showed us yet again when Katie is asked about her relationship with Lala, despite Lala's friendship with Sheena and how they've come back together because of the kids. And, you know, Andy is asking her questions about that. And if she ever feels like, you know, um, if it ever affects her relationship with Lala, that Lala is so close with Sheena and that her and Sheena obviously aren't. I mean, they've kind of put things aside to be there for Ariana during Scandal, but they have their issues. And she's like, um, uh, uh, do you ever feel like, and Tom Schwartz is the first one to pop, pipe up. You can tell that Katie's struggling, you know, with mm, what, what, how should I put this? Um, I mean, yeah, I, Katie does feel that if it, the shoe was on the other foot, Lala wants total, um, loyalty. And she's like, if before when Lala's been mad at Sheena, she's like, if anyone is effing with Sheena, then don't F with me. But not the same can be said for Katie's situation. So she feels that she would be more loyal than Lala. And Schwartz is the one that pipes up and says, yeah. Actually, Katie, you said that you thought Lala didn't have your back as much as you've had her back in this. He just, he sings, he sings like a bird or whatever that saying is. He just like sings like a canary. He just, but yet this is the same man that can't open his mouth to hold Sandoval accountable at all. But he just throws Katie, his wife or now ex-wife, but someone he was married to, he was supposed to love under the bus so quickly. He was like, boom. Yep. She said this. Yep. When we were having uh, our friendship. Yeah. That was going really well. Yeah, in our private conversations where she trusted me, she's actually said you're not a good friend to her. And uh, she feels like, you know, she has more respect. And, you know, yeah. So, yeah, she she said you're shitty. But Sandoval, he's like, oh, I don't want to throw Sandoval under the bus. But he so quickly throws Katie under the bus. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, Schwartz, you are pathetic. Pathetic. All right. So then we see the reaction from Rachel Raquel when Sheena's like, I didn't know that this was happening. I was surprised when Scandal came out because, I mean, Lala had brought it up to me before. But um, as far as I heard from Ariana, I mean, they were in a good place in January and they were having lots of intimacies. And Rachel Raquel's like in the trailer, like, but Tom said that we only touch ourselves when we're together. That's what Tom said. That's weird. I would like Tom to answer this question. Huh. So they talk about, you know, January and the question Raquel wants answered is, once you started this relationship with Rachel Raquel, why not come clean to Ariana? And then James goes, and to your friends. And Lisa's like, James, it's not about you. And Ariana's like, actually, it is. James, I mean, you were like a brother to him. And Tom's like, oh, it's like a brother? Are you serious? I call him like once a week. He didn't even touch my penis. God. They're like, uh, Tom, you paid for... Rachella or whatever the hell it was called. The engagement. You did all that. What are you talking about? And he's like, oh, God, I mean, I did that to be liked. And I was just maybe grooming her early on just in case it didn't work out. So I wanted to show her what she could have. Huh? 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 And James like, do you remember who I am, Tom? Yeah, you're James motherfucking Kennedy. So that was, I mean... You know, Ariana's a little more important. Like, yes, she is. But if even Ariana is in 
And then we see, oh my gosh, James and Tom's first little spat. Okay. James is ready to throw down. Okay. And it looked like most of you in the chat think that in a hair braiding hitting contest. So they, if they would braid their bangs, each of them braid their own bangs and then hit each other with the braided bangs, James would win. And I agree. Okay. So then James is all up in Sandy Butt's face because Sandy Butt's like, oh, whatever, dude, opportunist, you effed Kristen to get on the show. James is like, yeah, when I was 21, that was like a million years ago, old man. What are you talking about? You're 42. And I loved it. I feel like James Kennedy watches this channel, you guys. I feel like he watches this channel because he is aging up. Actually, I bet you Tom Sandoval is 42. I bet you he was born in like 1981. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he strikes me as a 70s baby, but yeah. So when he's like, you're 42, man, you're one with a mustache. So he jumps up and he's in Tom's face. Tom's like. And then Andy's like, oh, my cards. Oh, my cards. That was like my favorite part because it's for Andy's cards. Andy's like up. Security's nowhere. It's just Andy Cohen holding James Kenny. He's like, you're a 42 year old, bro. You're a 42. Andy's like, oh, my cards. Oh, bummer my cards Come on, my cards he's just like picking up his cards <laughs> and then tom sandy but immediately becomes the hero of the story you know in his own it, according to him he's like i stood up for you james and james is like f you i don't want you to stick up for me james was just he's like you're a pussy ass bitch i don't need you i don't want you and he's like and you know what your band sucks dick you're a nothing you are nothing. You're a loser. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh my. I was cracking up. I'm sorry. I know that's childish. I don't care. I will be childish. Okay. When he was like, your band sucks, dick. You're nothing. You're a loser. He needs to hear it. He needs to hear it. He needs to hear it from somebody. Your effing ball is going down the drain. Okay. You're backstabbing hoe. He called him a backstabbing hoe. I was like, yes, James Kennedy. And then Tom Sandybot has like all the rage of a million failed strip mall bars. He's like, I owe my mom too much money to listen to this shit. His eyes are red. He's He wants a cigarette so bad. He's just like this. He's like, get in my face one more time, motherfucker. I'll put you down. And we're like, okay, like you're scary. So then James is like, okay, so James is back up. So then Lisa Vanderpump's up in her gladiator dress. And she's like, you guys, no, don't fight. I have vested interest in that one. No, but if you are going to fight, make sure you kill him because then we'll get more business. No, that's not right. This is, no, stop. Stop, you guys. Don't, James, no. Tom's like, come on, bring it. And James is like, I'm younger than you. I'll F you up so quickly. Look at me, bro. I'm way more ripped than you. I mean. When he's talking about being more ripped, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> These two. <laughs> it was funny because it's like normally <laughs> I would be like, well, okay, okay, dudes, whatever. I mean, I've, I've been known. My husband has a favorite story about me where there's these two comedians in every show. We were in Arizona where we started comedy years and years ago. And they would show up at every show and they hated each other and they hate each other. And they would be like, yeah, who's screw you. And then they, they just ruined the vibe for everybody. And they were just always yelling at each other, but no one did anything. And they were always threatening to beat each other up. And, you know, one time they just, the, they were at a con, we were at a comedy club. We're sitting outside on the patio. We're having a good time. Then they show up and then they're in the parking lot. Just like, yeah, dude. Okay. But they have like 30 feet apart. And I just yell, somebody hit somebody. Cause uh, there's a point where you're just over it. How many times are you going to say you're going to beat somebody up? Just do it. That like fake male machismo, like, go, go kick your ass. Well, then do it. How many times are you going to tell me you're going to do it? Because you're ruining it for everyone else. We're trying to have a nice conversation. You know, we're trying to enjoy ourselves. So just hit each other already. Um, so in this regard, I was like, just hit, just hit each other. Just hit each other. <laughs> Justine, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate it so much. Yes, James saying, I'm way more ripped than you, bro. I'm way more you you're like 80 your band sucks dick i will beat his ass and andy's like stay in the fucking chair and he's like whatever whatever i gotta take a piss uh and there was this point where i kept playing it back where ariana mentioned something about shaking like 
there's conversation around shaking, like James is shaking or Tom's shaking. And Ariana mentions, I could have sworn. Now, this is just what I heard. She says something about, oh, are you shaking because of your Adderall or something? And she's saying this toward Tom Sandy. But and remember, I've previously speculated that this is like some angry Adderall rage. And some of you have thought could be, um, what do you call it? Uh, what's the stuff you take to grow your muscles? Roid rage. But yeah, Tom was shaking. Then Ariana says, if you play it back, and I was watching on the Peacock version because I love the swears, and she, I hear Adderall and shaking toward Tom, and I'm like, oh. Ooh. And if he's drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes and taking Adderall, especially if he doesn't need Adderall, he's going to be, mm-hmm. Oh, Lala said it? Okay. She asked James. I, I could have sworn. Oh, I kept replaying it, but I was like, oh, maybe I just wanted it to, because I'm like, that's what I've been saying. That's what I've been saying. But yeah, it does seem, it does seem substance enhanced. It does seem a little bit like that to me. But then James is like, I'm going to the restroom. You're warm with the mustache. And everyone starts laughing. And Tom just looks, this is probably the best way to deal with someone like Tom Sandy Buck because his ego is so big. And he's such a POS that for him, he's like, oh, gosh, you know, having people laugh at him. And we do know, you know, there's that saying um, and it's like um, uh, men fear women will laugh at them. Women fear men will kill them. I know that's a really it's but I mean, it's a true saying. And it's not but I mean, it's not funny. Um, but in that moment, I was like. Oh shit. Cause that's someone like Tom. Oh no, he does not like to be laughed at. And all the ladies are laughing because James is putting him in his place. Ooh. And then Tom's like, Ooh, uh, like, dude, James pees on a fire hydrant. That's like, like, like a dog. That's his fire hydrant. And I'm like, what is he talking about? What is that? What in the middle school? So much of this reunion, Tom Sandy bought was like uh, a 12-year-old. It's like, takes one and no one. T dude, seriously, it takes one and no one. Ariana. Oh. Mm. Yes. Thank you, Coffee Buns. He's such a diet squirt. He is such a diet squirt. He's very much diet squirty all the way. And this is where James goes pee, you know, on his fire hydrant. Uh, according to Sandoval. And then Ariana's like, uh, you know, she's chill. She tells Andy. I mean, Ariana, you can tell she's just like, she's kind compared to Sandy, but especially she's like, sorry about your cards, Andy. And he's like, I know my cards. And then Lala's like, listen, um, uh, Sandy, but well, stop bringing stuff up from 500 freaking years ago. This was your life partner, not a Kristen Doty living in a shithole, serving tables. <laughs> because this dude is still bringing up Kristen Doty. Tom Sandy Butt still wants to blame another woman. If it doesn't work to blame Ariana, well, I'll just go back to blaming Kristen. That worked before because that worked for him. Because this is what he does. He blames women. And they're like, no, no, Kristen Doty is not relevant in this. Even James Kennedy's like, uh-uh. No, 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 no. It's you. You are the problem today. Now, Tom's like, what? Oh, good. Ugh. And Lala's like, no, you like Raquel was going to be James's wife. This was your life partner. Yeah, done. Effed up. Stop pulling up the history books. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Mic drop. Mic drop on that one. So then Sandoval has to finally answer this. Why not come clean? Uh, after you started the affair with Rachel Raquel to Ariana. And this is the one Rachel Raquel's like, I want him to answer this question. I want him to answer this question. Hi. James Kennedy comes back from peeing and he's like, but I'm not going to talk to Tweedledee and Tweedle Little Dick. And Schwartz is like, am I Tweedledee? You're both. You're both, Schwartzy. You're both. So then James sits down and he says, ugly fuck. And Andy's like, 
stop the re- did you just call me an ugly fuck is it because i won't get botox because people have been telling me to get botox but i refuse because why should i have to he's like no not you the other ugly fuck and then you see lisa's like oh james no oh no james and tom's like mm. he's very mad he needs a diet squirt and a ciggy asap no no and james is like no no not you andy you're handsome hmm. he he's the ugly fuck He's an old fuckhead. <laughs> and even Andy's like, stay in your F and C. So many F bombs. And then Lisa's like, okay, that's stay in your seat. Otherwise, you won't be on stage. You're going to go and tie me out. Okay. I'm going to put you in the little uh, baby that, uh, you know, it's, it's a little fenced in area where I put the little babies. That's where you're going to go. And this is where Lisa thinks, okay, how she's dealt with James in the past will work. Threaten him. I'll take away your airtime. You can't DJ. You won't be able to DJ anymore. And James is like, I'm going to get sent for time out. I'm going to get spanky. And everyone's laughing because it's so ridiculous. But that's literally what Lisa's doing in this moment is she is, you know, going to punish him like she's done in the past. But it doesn't work anymore. I'm going to get a spank bottom, Andy. And Lala's like, he'd probably like it. And Lisa said... He probably does, but it was like a great way. It was so silly and childish, but also a great diffuser of this heaviness. And also like, don't, don't divert back to trying to push the blame on James or anyone else. You know, people are having very real reactions. I mean, Sandy Butt is very aggressive. He's fought people on the show before. He's threatened to fight people on the show. He's threatening James right now. James is threatening him. They're both acting like, you know, aggressive a-holes, but to only call out James on this. It worked for him to be like, I'm going to get spank bottom. I'm going to have to go to timeout because Lisa said. And Lisa's like, damn it, that doesn't work anymore. It still works on Ken. Still works on Ken. Thank you, Justine, for the super chat. Sandoval may actually be 42 because Kristen Doty oh, said her podcast that he lies about his age. I think he was born in 1981. But technically, I think he was born in 1976. But that is my opinion. Okay. Yes, we needed the levity coming from James. Hashtag spanked bottom hashtag time out. I'm going to get a time out from Lisa Vanderpump. She's going to do that. So then Rachel Raquel's like, can we get back to where Tom answers the question while he didn't just end it with Ariana? Because Tom kept saying that. He said, wait, what did he say? He said, Rachel, do you, can I bum a cigarette and then dip out? And then he said, after we had sex, and I loved it because it was the first time I've had sex with someone I love. And then he would leave right after. Sometimes I didn't finish, but that's okay. Tom says women don't have to finish and that women who don't finish live longer. And that's why men make more money. Yeah, that makes sense, right? So he said he was going to leave Ariana eventually. But he never gave me a date. But that's okay. So this is where Tom's finally, like, I was, like, obviously, like, scared to. I mean, like, obviously, like, she was going through a lot during that time. Like, Ariana's being, like, a total selfish bitch. Like, she, her grandma was dead. The dog was dead. Like, she kept, like, having people die. And it was, like, so inconvenient for me. And, like, I did plan to break up there, Andy, because I'm a good guy. Like, dude, seriously, Ariana, I was going to tell you. Okay, so the Tuesday after we wrapped... I was going to go to see you next Tuesday. God, Ariana. Like, dude, like, seriously. And I was going to have sex with Richard Raquel in front of everybody and just say, Ariana made me do it. Like, God, she threatened me. Okay. And then I was going to tell her, you know, that it's over. Because I, when I was, like, inside of Rachel Raquel, like, Ariana, come on. God. You're so difficult. I'm going to show her. This is my mojo. Like, dude, seriously. And then, you know, I thought I would wait because... You know, like, people are going to be asking, like, about that sandwich place she has. And I didn't want them to, like, dude, God, Ariana, I don't want them to ask about me. I wanted it to be about you. So, I'll, like, I was, like, waiting to be, like, a nice guy. To tell her, like, after the fact so she could promote her sandwich shop. But, like, dude, Ariana, like, fucked it up. God, I was trying to be a good person. I'm like, what is this? 
this logic isn't logicking. Whatever Tom Sandoval thinks he was going to do, it was like, no. This he again tries to paint himself as a hero. I actually had plans. Like, dude, like I was going to tell her, but like I was going to wait till we wrapped. And like she was just like, God, it's like everyone. It was like, oh, my dog's dead. My grandma's dead. My toes broken. Oh, the pool heater broke. It was like never a good time. Oh, toilet's plugged. I I clogged it again. Like, and she she plunges. She doesn't do batteries, dude. And like paper towels, but she plunges like a motherfucker. Okay, because I don't like deal with shit very well. Okay, this is like it's like flushing me. But like I went to like therapist, dude, and my therapist was like, all on Tuesday, we're gonna fully wrap filming. I'm gonna fully tell her. So she won't have to go in the interview and be like, oh, this is only shop. We talk about that. Huh? Huh? What? And this is when Schwartz screws up the script. And so <laughs> Andy's like, Schwartz, when did Tom Sandoval tell you about the affair? This is how you know someone's lying. You ready? If they start the story, like you've been waiting to get this answer, and they go, so, so if they started with so, that means they practiced this before. So, um, so, uh, Tom told me July, anyways, uh, back to me that he was feeling very bad. Ariana was kicking him at night in her sleep. Ariana was, you know, letting him take equity out of the home and then, just like, you can do it, Tom. Just real, real bitchy stuff, right? And then she like looked at him, you know how women do? And she just like, with her eyes, just horrible. And he was, you know, we hung out. We got drunk in his hot tub. And he was like, uh, Schwartz, dude, I am so mad at Ariana. Because Ariana, she doesn't stock the paper towels with the batteries. And I'm always like, where the fuck are the batteries? You know, because I have my own um, vibrator like I like to use. Hey, don't blame me. Uh, I just like it, okay? It's not just for ladies, Ariana. So I like... Uh, I play with her vibrator. Anyways, so there's never any batteries in the paper towels to clean it after, which, you know, well, there's cleanup for me, but anyways. Ugh. So Ariana's being like a total skank and not filling up the paper towels or the batteries. So that's what he said, Andy. He was like, you know, Ariana wasn't there for him. She didn't fill the paper towels and there were just no batteries and he uses a lot of double A's, allegedly. So he then, you know, said, hey, I became friends with Rachel Raquel and we were just talking. We're just, they were connecting vaginally about their problems. And he was just, you know, inserting himself literally in another woman, I guess. And she was there for him, you know, in a way Ariana couldn't be um, because everyone was like, you know, she kept, people kept dying, you know, which, gosh, I mean, who wants to deal with that, you know? And Tom was wondering if she was, you know, secretly killing these people and it was it was a whole thing so yeah that's uh then they hit it out uh or hit it hit it in they hit it they they were talking a lot and then they were talking some more anyways um around that time uh or time huh i remember uh after the mondrian uh you told me yeah uh, you can find in Roquel after the mondrian you guys had an intimate moment and Ariana brings up when Charlotte's body wasn't even effing cold. Their dog, their dog, their dog. Mm, R.I.P. Charlotte. Like, how could he be thinking about sticking his dick in someone that isn't Ariana when they just lost a part of their family? That just proves that he is evil. Evil. But I guess everyone does have their own grieving process. And his is just putting his penis in someone else's vagina. But we know that that. So heartful. So then Tom's like, anyways, um, back to my story about Sandoval and Raquel. When did I find out? Uh, okay, so I was born in 1981. Tom was born in 76. And my mom was actually, we were born in Minnesota, Woodbury. And then we moved to Florida. And uh, did I mention my brother? He's okay, but he might have not been. Okay, okay. anyways. Um, and then uh, crocodiles. There's So then Tom was, I was telling him a story about crocodiles like you do. And how there's these like, alley well, I mean, really, what's the difference between a crocodile and alligator? And, you know, and, and then Katie's like, Tom, get to the freaking point. When did you find out? You don't need to be, this is so crazy. And he's like, okay, whatever, like late August. I met up with Tom and he broke it down for me. And then Tom's like, 
Tom Sandoval's like, oh, late August? So when the parliament lights is going on here? I would never. Are you sure? And Schwartz is like, oh, shit. I screwed up the script. And then everyone else is just like, oh, look at you guys. You didn't put your timelines together. And I just love how the unity over on that side, um, poor Sheena has to sit next to the Toms, but everyone else is on the other side. Um, Lala, James, Katie, and Ariana, and they're just making fun of the buffoonery of these two. And Schwartz is like, no, you told me, like, after after the wedding, we did it. Uh, eh. Then cut to his interview with Andy before the reunion. And he says, when did you tell Schwartz that you and Rachel Raquel hooked up? And Tom's like, um, I would say, like, dude, like, um, like, let me check my card again. Like, January, mid to late January, mid to, dude, like, yeah, mid to late January. Liar! Liar! He's looking off mid, like, I would say, Joe, what? Mid late, I would I would say mid late. I'm like, oh my god, you liar! Send us a liar! Send us a liar! And Ariana's just like, I know you got to coach the rat all day yesterday, but you didn't get to coach this rat, being Schwartz. I love how she's calling Rachel Raquel and Tom Sandy Butt rats because that's exactly what they are. And then Rachel Raquel's in the trailer, and she's like, at least it's not me that screwed up. <laughs> it's so crazy. Um, and then they ask to the Toms about that crunchy, cringy, exploitative scene where they're at the what is the breakfast burrito truck, and Tom Schwartz takes his glasses off and he's and you know uh, he says, "I think Rachel Raquel has a crush on someone else." And Tom Sandy Boots like, "Really? Oh, knowing." At that time, they both knew. And Andy's like, when you were talking about that, were you talking about Rachel Raquel? And Tom's like, yeah. I mean, I'm not stupid here. I got to get producer Tilly. Come on, Tilly. You, you got to get up here? She gets her little nails cut or caught in the chair. And he's like, I'm not stupid. I knew. Yeah. I was talking about him. Consciously or consciously. You guys, I'm not an effing idiot, okay? And then Lisa Vanderpump, when Schwartz says she, he's not an idiot, she's like, mm, I mean, I, 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 mm. okay. Tom looks pissed because the whole storyline, and then Tom's going to go on this, you know, thing saying that he just had a one-night stand with Rachel Raquel, and nobody believes that it was just a one-night stand. You have been plotting and grooming and wanting to start this affair. You didn't just do it once. You were doing it and doing it and doing it a lot. And even Lala and James are like, he's lying. It definitely happened more than once. He's a liar because you're a liar. You've been known to lie. We've now caught you in many, many lies. So we can't believe anything that you say at all. Uh, they talk about his other cheating stuff and how Ariana knew about Miami Girl and how she had said it happened so early in their relationship before they were monogamous that before they were like an item, I guess they were just kind of, they hadn't put the terms down for the relationship. And so it was more casual. And she, when the information came out, she stuck by him because she loved him and she wanted other people to, uh, she didn't want people attacking him. She wanted people to see the good in him that she saw. And when they asked Tom, about Miami girl. Like, why did you do that? Oh, like, dude, like I just, I had like been in a relationship with Kristen for like, oh, like five years. And I haven't like been single, even though I cheated on her a bunch, but like I needed to get my rocks off. So it's like, I needed to feel single. Um, so Ariana's reasoning is like, I didn't, I knew about Miami girl. Why didn't I say anything is we weren't exclusive at that time. But I saw the rest of my life with this person and I wanted everybody to see the best in him because that's how I saw it at the time. And Tom's like, yeah, I mean, like, dude, like, I just like couldn't believe like, okay, I might be getting in a relationship with Ariana. And then that's just like, you know, Ariana only has one vagina. That's like the only one I'm going to get like one. 
So I was like doing the math, like one vagina and one vagina equals, well, that would be technically two vaginas, but our only is one. But you know what I'm saying, Andy? Like, seriously. So I was just like, ugh. And this is where he brings up Kristen Doty again. And everyone's like, no one cares about Kristen Doty. That was a million years ago. Kristen Doty has done her own work. She doesn't want to be remembered with you. We all like Kristen. We don't like you. Quit trying to blame another woman for your problems. James says, get over it, you loser. And then Ariana's like, he's asking about me and you, not Kristen. He's like, that's our history. And she's like, no, no, we don't have to go over this like this. And then Schwartz is like, this is like therapy. That's what we do. No, Schwartz, this isn't like therapy. So Lala again has to remind Sandy, but this was eight years ago, bro. Eight years ago. You, we are tackling what's happening present day. Kristen Doty hasn't been on the cast in how many seasons? She had to come back because of you, sir. Oh my gosh. And, you know, you keep bringing this stuff up. <laughs> Tom Sandoval. It's like, also, we were not like best friends when we started dating. Like, dude, like, God. And everyone's like, Tom, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. Quit rubbing your hair. And Lala's like, all right. So when you're not that serious, you can have sex with the best or don't have sex with the best friend. But when you're in a committed relationship, then you have sex with the best friend. Like, you make no sense. And Ariana's like, yes, yes, thank you. And Tom's like, oh, oh, what did I say? What did I do? And it's like, you just look dumb. Then we do some, um, you know, we talk a little bit about all of the breakups that happen because, um, and very little. I mean, most of this part one is going to be about Scandival because that is the, what everyone is talking about. And, um, but there are, a lot of big breakups, Lala and Randall, James and Raquel, and then Katie and Schwartz. So we get into Katie and Schwartz and she just, we talked about this earlier, you know, she's like, I just realized that he did not have my back and he didn't prioritize and he put everyone else over me. And he's like, by necessity in the moment, but I'll let you talk. And then they talk about the bar and she's like, bro, it's not like you're curing cancer. Calm your boner. And then Schwartz tries to make Katie to be the bad guy saying, well, when we broke up and we still had to live in the same place, you were already dating other people. Yeah, you broke up. And guess what, Schwartz? At least she waited until you broke up because you definitely didn't wait until you broke up to date other people or make out with other people or cheat on her. Katie's the only one, as Andy pointed out at this reunion, that did not cheat Katie and Lisa. Everyone else has cheated before. And Schwartz cheated a lot on Katie. So for him to somehow villainize Katie and then they basically talk about the agreement they had to not um, hook up with any friends. And if they were going to remain friends, they wouldn't hook up with anyone from the friend group or anyone they worked with, you know, which I totally understand when you're in your 20s. We were watching Vanderpump when it first began and they're all in their 20s and they were just like, whatever, early 20s, partying, mid 20s. But now they're like 40. So, yeah. And they were married. So, yes, if you're going to have some kind of friendship, it's okay to have boundaries. Then Lala and Katie have to explain to Schwartz what boundaries are because he wants to make it something it's not like, no, Katie, you just want to have a friendship with me on your terms. And they're like, no, it's called boundaries, bro. You never respected her boundaries when you were married. So why would we expect you to now that you're not married? And this is why Katie doesn't want to be friends with you because you're always pushing the blame on her when it's just, she tells you exactly what she wants out of the relationship. You just re refuse to give it to her. And he just like, that seems tenuous. I don't know. No, Schwartz. She's like, you can have sex with people too. And he's like, I did, but I did it when we were married. Okay. I did the respectable thing. I did it when we were married, Katie. Um, and uh, Katie tells us that she no longer um, sees the the little guy. I forget his name, but the little guy with the cute little curly hair. And he's got a new girlfriend. And she's like, he's a lovely person. Katie's just like leaps and bounds more emotionally mature than Schwartz will ever be, even the way she deals with that. So then Schwartz talks about how unreasonable it was for Katie to have this 
boundary and these standards, you know, like how dare, like, what if we were under the same roof and you kissed Peter, you know, but Katie, if you would have fallen in love with someone or if, she's basically like, if Katie would have done that, if she would have found someone within the group, I would have let her. And she's like, darling, you're not a victim in this. And Schwartz says, I'm telling you, there's a double standard. Schwartz, give me a break. Give me a break. And so he just wants to be off the hook. He's like, it was six months later and it was a kiss. And then they turn to Scandival, to Sandy Butt. And they're like, yeah, you think it's perfectly appropriate to F one of my closest girlfriends. So that's a silly question because he's asked if he thought that was appropriate. And <laughs> this part is just so ridiculous. Okay. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. So <laughs> Schwartz is trying to be a victim in this. He's trying to create a double standard. And they're like, Sandra, what do you think of that rule? And then Ariana goes, oh, I know how he's going to answer. He thinks it's perfectly appropriate to F one of my best friends. And then they go to Rachel Raquel. And she's in the, the trailer and she's like rolling her eyes, you know, <laughs> it's like, that's what you did. I, I, her reactions make no sense. There's a lack of empathy. I heard um, that two of their friends, uh, mutual friends, that um, one gentleman, I forget his name, starts with a K and then Jamie Lynn, not Spears. Sheena's friends, they were doing an interview talking about this. And he was saying he stopped being friends with Raquel and that she actually, he thinks she has zero empathy about this. Like she just doesn't care. She was so calm and just not apologetic in the least um, when all this came out. And when he spoke to her that he was like, Ooh, this, this is not right. Um, but then Schwartz goes on, or Sandoval goes on to say that he doesn't think it's appropriate. Um, and she's like, well, you did it a lot. Uh, and he goes, that doesn't mean it's appropriate. Huh? <laughs> and then Schwartz goes on this stupid rant about, I'm sorry, I hurt your feelings. This is what he does. He tells Katie she's wrong. He mansplains. He gaslights her and says, what you experienced didn't happen. And here's what really happened. Okay. And no, you don't feel this way. Here's how you feel. And then he'll say, sorry about that. And then he'll go on to say, sorry, then to just stab her again. He's like, but something about that kiss was just so liberating. And Rachel Raquel is in the chair like, I liked it. Mm, that's so nice that the boys like me. Like she, Her reaction, I'm thinking, huh? Oh yeah, their friend Kale. Thank you so much. I'm like, Oh my gosh, Rachel Raquel, Rachel Raquel. These reactions are like the Joker. It's it's really messed up. She should not be having these kind of reactions. And then after Short says that the kiss was liberating, Lala's like, how effed up is it that you are saying this and your friend is having sex with the whole time? And, Short, and Sandoval's like, not the whole time. God, dude, seriously. Like sometimes I dipped out of her vagina. Sometimes I did. It's sick. And Lala's like, it's sick. And, and Sandy's both like, no, God, dude, listen to me. It happened one time. And then I let, I dried out my weans. Okay. I, I got my mojo back one time. And then we took a break. I put my penis on a shelf. Okay. And then it didn't happen until later. Then it didn't happen. Like, dude. And I was like, it doesn't matter. Yes, it does, Lala. Ariana, tell her. Oh, shoot. She doesn't speak for me anymore. She can't help me. It makes sense. But it makes sense in my head. Um, and then Sandy Butt tries to keep going with this. A one-night stand is different than an ongoing thing. Sir, you can't one-night stand your close friend. Your girlfriend's bestie and your close friend who stays at your house and you hang out with all the time and you also work with. You can't one night stand that person because you're going to see them again. It's not just going to be a one night stand. This is very different than that. And there were definitely seven months to year stand. But you want us to believe and it makes it no better either way. I don't understand. Some of these lies are lies 
that make no sense. You're just lying to lie or some, or you're just that dense. Like we've talked about that. You think this makes you look better, but it really doesn't. It's still a whole affair. So some of these things they're saying like, so you gave your wiener like a month break and then you started back up again. What do you want an award? What do you want a cookie? Like what do you think you're going to get a prize for this? Do you get a participation trophy? I mean, you're not, you're not going to get accolades for that. He's like, God, it's a lot different than an ongoing affair. Lisa's like, okay, I can't even stick up for this. It's different. It's the relationship, okay? It's like you have an ongoing relationship, and then your best friend is making out with her. It's strange. It's creepy. It's macabre. Macabre, macabre. <laughs> I love the use of macabre by Lisa. It's macabre. And then Lala's like, he's a liar. And then Ariana drops some reunion tea and she says the one night stand that you planted the seed for last april in the hot tub at coachella allegedly sheena heard from a mutual friend that rachel raquel was out telling everyone that tom sandy butt has been like hitting on her grooming her since last april not this past one coachella 2022 not coachella 2023 Coachella 2022, while Ariana was sleeping in a hot tub, he allegedly told Rachel Raquel, oh, you know, we're in an open relationship, dude. So, like, if you want to, like, hop on this, like, seriously, dude, seriously, what? Oh, God, yeah, whatever. Yeah, dude, Ariana and I, Ariana and I are in an open relationship. Well, there's your open relationship rumor when all season long and preseason Ariana's getting interviewed on red carpets and they're like, what's this about an open relationship? And she's like, I don't know where that came from. Why we have an open relationship. Am I bisexual? Yes. Was Tom in the car driving while Lala went down on me years ago? Yes. Were we all consensual in that act? Yes. But we do not have an open relationship. Well, looks like Tom Sandy butts out there putting that propaganda out there. And Ariana's like, you've been going after her since freaking Coachella. You effing piece of effing shit. <gasps> oh, my gosh. And he's like, oh, Rachel never said that. And they're like, how would you know, Sandy, but if Rachel said that or not? And Rachel's like, I think I might have said it. I don't know. Tom, what page of the script is that on? Tom wrote me a script. Let's see. Page seven. Rachel. That's me. Don't, don't, not, don't tell them about the hot tub talk. Okay. No, it didn't happen. Good job, Tom. Yeah, look, babes, good. It's awesome. <laughs> So this, uh, I had a feeling we've talked about this. I knew it was going on since last Coachella. Oh, I was like, she's going to say whatever you're coaching her to say. Sheena's like, well, Andy, you'll have to ask her because I got a restraining order on me. I'm not going to be here when Rachel Raquel comes out. So make sure you ask her about this because I mean, it's definitely, <laughs> she said this to somebody. Okay. I was like, no, I didn't say that. Oh. Uh, then Andy wants to, you know, okay, he's got to ask this question because this is what all the naysayers love to say. You've all cheated. Everyone has cheated. Now, I don't know how many times it has to be explained that the stakes are different now. They're older. This is a very devious cheat. This is cheating on levels we've never seen before on Vanderpump. We have never seen them well into their 40s having full on affairs with friends. Okay. Did Kristen and Jax have sex while Tom Sandy, but was sleeping and they were watching drive. Yeah, they did. Were they in their twenties? Hell yeah. Were they all drunk? Yeah. Did it all come out and they all had to pay the price. Kristen Doty got everyone stopping friends with her. She got fired. She told the manager to suck a dick. She's done therapy. She has a podcast now. She's a better human for it. Jax, he got a lot of Botox. We might let him back on to drag Sandoval but that's it. Um, so everyone has kind of, well, at least the women have, you know, yeah, we know the stories, we know the cheating, but not on this level. Now, when it is your almost nine year life partner that you own a home with, that you're in businesses with, you know, because I mean, the relationship a little bit is, is, is branding, 
I mean, they did, you know, uh, alcohol and different campaigns together, influencer type campaigns as a couple. I mean, they were a brand. They are. Um, luckily, not anymore, because now Ariana is her own brand and can be independent. And he gets zero of that money, which is fantastic. Um and Tom is well into his 40s. So he's we're seeing this pattern of behavior repeating. And what we always look for is patterns because patterns show you that the people aren't changing and they don't care. And he's just going to keep doing it. He's going to keep shitting on people. And you hope that those things that happen in your 20s with him cheating and Tim cheating on Kristen and him cheating with Miami girl and him lying. You know, you would hope that stuff would stop, but it didn't because he got away with it for so long. So now, since everyone in the group, James was held. I mean, was James? Was, I mean, yeah, he cheated on Rachel Raquel. There were girls coming in to pride going, here's your clothes back, James. And he was like, I didn't do it. And Rachel Raquel was like, I don't know if he cheated or not. Um, but those were a million years ago. Yes. Did James have sex with Kristen when he was 21 and it got him on the show? Yeah. Yeah. But today we're talking about Tom Sandoval. And the difference is they're not negating the fact that they've all cheated. They are not negating that. Nobody is. Dang, Lala is like, hell yeah. Yeah, F. James, sure did. Sure did. Wasn't friends with Raquel. Sure did. But guess what? I was an alcoholic. Now I'm sober. Lots of things have changed. I got in a relationship with Randall. He completely shit on me and turned into Harvey Weinstein Jr. And I'm paying the price on that. You know, if that's how the hell karma works, well, then whatever. You know, everybody has had to pay their dues or I'm sorry, pay for what they've done and their mistakes and things. And now all they're saying is, Sandy, but it's your turn. And Sandy, but you did it worse than anyone else because you carried on this long, extensive affair that was unnecessary and you did it to be cruel. And like we were saying in the chat, it isn't necessarily even about the cheating. I mean that it's about the humiliation and it's about the joy or the, the lack of, um, you know, uh, his lack of caring at all that he was humiliating Ariana. It was the fact that he could be with someone for that long, someone who believed in him, someone who listened to his, shitty karaoke singing, sat in the front row, clapped, cheered, said, I believe in you so much, baby, you can take money out of the home, the uh, out of the equity of the home. And I believe in your dumb bar. And I believe in you, even though you call yourself a cis male, I believe in you. I love you. We will grow old together. I'm here for you. And you could do her so dirty and then paint this narrative that she somehow tried to villainize her and what Tom Sandy, but if he would have accomplished what he wanted to accomplish with this narrative, like Ariana is psycho. She's, she was threatening to take her life. She was mean to me. She talked down to me. She was dismissive. She wouldn't touch my wiener. He was trying to harm her reputation. He was trying to stop her bag. He was trying to, you know, essentially boot her off the show and then, Where's her income coming from? Completely destroy her in the court of public opinion. Completely destroy her reputation. And he gave zero regard. Kristen effed Jax and Jaff eff, Jax effed Kristen. And they were like, no, I didn't. Yes, I didn't. Jax is like, we did. And Kristen's like, oh, yeah, right. And they denied it a little bit. And then it all came out. But they didn't go out of their way. It's the extra humiliation. It's the extra steps this man took to be cruel. And it's the steps he continues to take to be cruel. You know, it's the times when he could be accountable and the times when he could really own his shit, but instead goes on tour. I mean, that just shows you everything you need to know about this dude. He took zero time, according to his second apology, because the first one was all about the business and Tom Schwartz when he was going to take time and Rachel Cal was going to take time and figure it out. He took zero time. He just went on tour. Like nothing happened. Do you think anyone would have cared if he would have canceled his tour? No, they're like giving away tickets allegedly. And there's people who show up and they're like, I bought this ticket before scandal. So I didn't want my money to go away. So I thought I'd just show up and see how big of a mess he is. 
No one would have cared. You should have done some self-work. It's the fact that Rachel Raquel is in hiding and this guy's on freaking tour. It is so different. It is on a level we've never seen. It is narcissistic. It is just pure. It's, it's evil. That's the only way I can explain it. I don't have a better word than what he's doing. It's just cruel. It's unnecessarily cruel what he did to Ariana and the lies that he perpetuated and the narrative he tried to build to defame her is unnecessarily cruel. There's just no reason for it other than he wanted to destroy this woman. So it's such on a different level. So when anyone tries to say, they're all cheers or whatever. Yeah, some of them in their 20s got drunk and banged while watching Drive. Yes. James slept with some girl that used to, I mean, Jax uh, had sex. I mean, the next grossest thing would probably be Jax having sex with um, Faith only because of where they allegedly did it, which wasn't she like a, was she a, am I just making this up or was she a home healthcare aide? And then, and the gross part about that is I think maybe she was taking care of someone. If she was a home healthcare aide, don't quote me on that, but it was someone was there that she was taking care of. And I think it was an elderly person. And then he was on um, audio. She audio recorded him saying horrible things about Brittany. So that was, I mean, that's why I'm like, Jax, you're going to need to do some more, more time to change. You can come back and drag Scandable for a season, but then you got to go back. Then you got to go back and do some personal work because I'm not ready to jump on the Jax bandwagon. Last I checked, Botox does not make you a better man. Okay. Can't find a better man. You got to go talk to Eddie better because I don't know. I don't know about all that. But this is on such a different epic scale. And people want to dumb it down. In their it's like you have, he's got to own it. He's got to own it. You know, own it. You got to own it. Uh, he has to atone. And he has to act like he effing cares, but I don't think he cares, unfortunately. And speaking of caring, also, uh, then we get into the conversation of the boundaries with Katie and Schwartz and, you know, uh, you know, caring and uh, freaking James comes in and he's like, you know, you're a man, she's a woman. So, you know, you got to respect her. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Well, James. And then Schwartz goes, oh, okay, that, but that's sexist. Like, oh, please. Oh, please. You guys have benefited on this show from white male privilege for 10 seasons. And now you're going to say something is sexist because it doesn't work out in your favor. What in the misandry are you talking about? I mean, these are the misandry guys. These are the guys that will tell you that that made up thing. Misandry is a thing. They will get online and follow those idiots on YouTube who have the channels. Who was that one guy that got arrested recently? Cause he was like trafficking women and he was one of those misandry idiots. Um, they're, they're watching those videos. Cause I'm like, what are you even talking about? And James is like, is that sexist bro? No, it's not sexist. Read a book or something. It just means that I love my woman. Ellie is the best woman I've ever met in my entire life. She's wonderful. I braid her hair at night because she likes to wake up in the morning and have little waves, but she doesn't want to put heat on her hair because it'll damage it. So I do that for her. She washes her hair and it's wet and then I put braids in it. And she wakes up and it's like a curl and she doesn't have to damage it with the heat from the flat iron or doing the beach waves. And I learned about that because I care about her because she is my woman. And when you love someone, you love them all, all of them beach waves and all. And I was like, oh my God, James Kennedy, <laughs> our little growing feminist. And then at least like, James, you're not Mother Teresa. And he's like, oh, I know I'm not. But when it comes to my current relationship, I am 100% in. I love her. She's the best thing that ever happened to me. Ellie is the best, better than all the rest. Okay. I love her. <laughs> Ali's the boss and what she says goes and I respect that and I want to I put myself into Ali's hands and I say Ali mold me Ali and she says your moon is in Taurus and your brain is in Capricorn but your penis is in Aquarius so it's too free so then she locks it down okay and it's like the gremlins they don't fade the penis after midnight and everything works out <laughs> James, James like, that's what happens when you're not into the person that you're with. Read a book. Read a book. 
Oh, and then Schwartz goes on some tirade about how he's, I've been a champion for everyone who Katie's dated. Shut up, Schwartz. And Katie's like, mm, I'm not dating Satchel anymore. He's cute. I, I do miss his curls, but he has a girlfriend. He's a lovely person. Like I said, she's just very mature. It just didn't work out. He wanted more than I could give. I just got out something big. So it was great. And then, oh my gosh, the Toms are asked about shorts and skeezies. And they're like, okay. So Andy's like, I thought we'd see shorts and skeezies. We've given you guys like eight years to get this together. We thought for sure you found a place, you know, last season. Uh, what's up? Why is why didn't shorts and skeezies open uh, this year? We had to do a song. It was all about something about her because they're making a lot more profit. When was it supposed to open? Schwartz is like, well, uh, you know, we thought end of August, but then we were like, this is really hard. And we had too many Coors Lights and too many mushrooms. And instead, you know, we were naive. So we opened up in November, November 2nd, to be exact. And uh, it's more than the food that was a problem. It was Greg. Greg's a total bitch. According to, you know, stand up was like, oh, God, freaking Greg is like a freaking cock block dude it's just like i want to like just like there are times dude where i want to like rent out the place just for like me and a bunch of hoes you know i want to have a hoes in different area codes party so i could like bring all the hoes together but they're like from other places so they don't know each other so they can't compare notes but it turns out women talk even if they're not from the same area especially when they're all in the same room i didn't think that went out dude seriously but anyways um uh, and then greg was like dude no are you gonna have these lobster tacos on the menu and i was like bro i don't know I'm thinking about vagina. So he, Sandoval wants, Sandy Butt wants to disparage Greg. No love lost. And then Schwartz is like, well, I mean, we've had problems with all the partners. So it's not just Greggy. And then Andy asked Lisa, how long would it take you to turn this? She's like, oh, that's not a fair question because I'm actually good at business. Unlike these two morons, but I do defend them. I do. I do. I would have it, you know, opened in like a month or two. And, you know, I'd have Ken rubbing my feet. And, you know, so but it's not fair. It's what I do. I mean, they don't know. But, you know, there were so many different variables, right? They don't know what they're doing. They're idiots, right? But why should you? You've never done it before. I didn't like it. And said, oh, I don't need Lisa Vendepump you know, because I've been there for them. And I'm like, Lisa, Lisa, wake up, Lisa, Lisa, wake up with all due respect, miss. Um, you need to see that Tom Sandy, Butt is, this is how he treats women that take care of him. Like we talked about earlier, this is what he's going to do to you now. So he's just going to shit on every woman that helps him out. That's what he's going to do. So how he's, you know, disparaging you despite all the help you've given him. She's like, oh, I've done everything for these boys. I've done everything. I've wiped their tushies. I've cleaned up after them. I've done everything for them. And yet he says this about me. It's like, yes, Lisa, this is what he does. This is who he is. Thank you, Justine, for the super chat. Sandy Butt angled uh, to get both Ariana and Katie off the show. Yes, he did. He villainized Ariana and was consumed with Rachel pursuing Schwartz to activate Katie. Exactly. They wanted to make them out like they're the Cuckoo Bananas girls and they wanted to just replace them with Creepy Joe. When Katie talked about Creepy Joe this episode, I live for it. She's like, uh, no, Schwartz. Schwartz is like, stop, Katie. Gonna, she's going to send a cease and desist. Ooh, don't threaten me with a good time. Who hasn't gotten a nice cease and desist? Also, there's no way Joe is ever going to take Katie to court for that. There's no way. Unless Joe has just unlimited income to waste in court. Um, if Katie speaks on her on social media. And then Schwartz calls Katie a troll. Again, throws her under the bus. Because, I mean, Katie does like to leave a comment on social media. But who cares? Joe was supposed to be Kristen Doty's BFF. And the moment she moved in with Schwartz, she blocked Kristen Doty. And that same day that Katie, uh, I think they announced their split, Katie said she like text her, you know, like, oh, I'm sorry. And then she hooks up with him. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it is so 
it's so insane. But yes, um, thank you, Justine, for the super chat. Uh, they definitely wanted to villainize Katie because Sandoval already hated Katie because Katie challenged him. Katie challenged him constantly. Katie had Schwartz's back more than Sandoval ever did. Katie had Schwartz's back against Sandoval. And, and Schwartz was just, he's just, he's another one. His, you know, his love for the man was greater than his love for his own woman. And Christine, you're hundred percent right. He doesn't like LVP. He resents LVP. He resents that he's not the star. He resents that he doesn't have more. She's like, I gave him 5% as a chance to start. 5% of 5 million. And then Sandoval just scoffs at that. He completely does. Because she's like, 5% of Tom Tom. And Andy's like, 5%. She's like, 5% of 5 million, Andy. And then Sandoval goes, I bought it too. You bought what? You bought what? 50,000? Then she gave you the 50,000 back. So what did you buy? What did you buy? Hmm? She gave it back to them the week it opened. So, and then when Schwartz can, uh, you know, blame Sandoval for what he should be blamed for is a messing up the Tom Tom. They had it so easy. The edits, the businesses were getting handed to them. The editing was just on point for both of them. And then Sandoval just shit on it by having this affair, this unnecessary affair and being unnecessarily cruel. And Schwartz is like, well, I'm not going to throw him under the bus. I'm not going to do it. And this is when we learn that Sandoval's mom didn't get her money back. It's one fire she cannot put out is the fire of her son. He is a liar, liar, pants on fire. She should get her hose and put his pants out. Then we talk a little bit about Schwartz and skeezies and whether the business was affected by this. And again, a couple of people went in there and wrote team Ariana and F you Tom or Tom sucks uh, on the mirror in lipstick. And they got some bad reviews on Yelp. I mean, yeah, that's shitty, but Yelp can easily lock that shit down, change it. Everything's fine. Not that big of a deal, but they want to make it a huge deal. And it's ridiculous. But then we also, uh, Lisa also like shades them, shades shorts a little bit for, you know, I've been married uh, 37 years and I've been married 40 years and opened 37 restaurants. And me and Ken have never uh, separated because of opening a restaurant. So Schwartz and Schwartz is like, but have you ever opened a restaurant in a strip mall? Huh? And Sandoval's like, yeah, it's like really hard. Like, dude, like, dude, I want to dip out so many times. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> it's just like, okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so uh, then we learn that the girls, uh, the women, their restaurant, something about her, the sandwich shop um, hasn't even opened yet, yet they've made $200,000 dollars on merch because once all this stuff broke people uh the news of scandal broke people wanted to support the women once they were finding out it was really a tom and tom exposed party and just uh you know how much grace they've been given all these years on the show and what a great edit they've been given and how the women have been villainized people started being like oh my god we want to you know we want to help the women uh how do we help Katie and uh, Ariana? And so they were like, well, I mean, I guess we'll just release our merch sooner than we planned on. And that is when uh, Andy's like, well, how much did, you know, it make? And they're like, um, I mean, they look so happy. They're like, uh, I think it was $200,000. And the Toms look, I thought I had a screenshot of this, but they look so bad. And it, this was hilarious because I'm like, oh, it's exactly what they deserve so much. I mean, they were just you could tell the Toms. The Toms always thought it was going to forever be about them. So when they heard I only have this picture of Tom, but when they heard that. The women and when Ariana and Katie made 200,000 off merch, it was just it was their faces where it was poetic justice. Oh, my God. That was my favorite part too. lavender blondes. Oh, my gosh. It was so Fantastic. The Toms were, they were just like, because mm, they've never been happy for them. They're not happy for them one bit. And the girls are just like, yeah, I, 
you know, we had planned that we wanted to, um, you know, do merch, but we thought we'd wait until the place opened, but it turns out everyone wants to support us, which is really fantastic. So yeah, we just started selling something about her merch and now we're $200,000 richer just on <laughs> sweatshirts and t-shirts. It's crazy. It's crazy that these guys don't know how to do that same thing. And then Ariana offers Andy some of the something about her merch and says, you can get rid of that trash Tom Tom sweatshirt that Rachel Raquel gave him. Cause when Rachel Raquel was at watch what happens live, the, the infamous watch what happens live episode, she gave the three triple XL or XXX um, sweatshirt to Andy Cohen. Andy's like, this sweatshirt is huge. Well, and Rachel Raquel's like, well, yeah, Andy, it's um, oversized as I wore it as a dress. That's spelled D-R-E-S-S. -S. <laughs> and Ariana's like, you can actually have a good merchandise and not that shitty ass Tom Tom. And Lisa's like, oh, Ariana, no. Ariana's like, Lisa, why are you sticking up for their merch? Because Tom, that's his design. Tom Sandoval, who I was in a relationship with for 10 years, he was my life partner, okay? But apparently he forgot about that. He said that he made that design and he would, I don't know if he trademarked it, she said. Um, so it was his. So it's not even official Tom Tom merch. And he's like, well, it's a, it's a beautiful hoodie. I mean, I'll wear both. And then James Kennedy's like, I'll wear the merch and I'll make it very fashionable. And I'll love it. I will love it so much. <laughs> I'll make it fashion. But man, these, oh, I gotta get this. Okay. I gotta get a picture. I gotta, I gotta get it when they say the 200,000. Okay. I gotta just. All right. Okay, I gotta I gotta do it such old school. Take a picture off of friggin' <laughs> my computer. I can't wait till I can screen share again, you guys. I'm gonna take it with my phone on my computer so we can just enjoy it together. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, this should be this is my oh, this is my new porn. Seriously, like if anyone's looking for um, just something nice to look at. It'll be these two. You can see my reflection in it. Or see, but who cares? Okay. Let's send this over to me so we can all just bask in the glory that is the Toms being hella defeated by the women having any success. You would think two men that did these women they supposedly say they love. I mean, Tom Sandy Butt says he still loves Ariana. You think they'd be happy for the women. You think they'd be happy for these women that they just loved and that they shared their life with for so long. You know, if Tom Schwartz was really that upset about um, uh, Katie dating someone else and this wasn't just a way for to make her look bad and him look good, if, he, if it really hurt him that when they broke up, she started seeing people, you would think that he would be happy for her success and Ariana's success, but mm, it turns out these are not the faces. Where did they go now? These are not the faces of two men that look, oh no, why doesn't it? Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Oh goodness, all oh, this for this, come on. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, let me take a screenshot of it because it's saying it's too big for StreamYard. This is why I just do the screen share because StreamYard is, they act silly. They act too silly. I can't with stream yet. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. Thank you for your patience while you're waiting. Make sure you smash that like, you guys. All right. I'm sending it back over to myself to upload so we can take a good look at it. Hit that like. Say hi to each other in the chat. Throw some hearts in there as I'm sending this screenshot over to my phone. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. This is Delilah. Oh, here we go. Now it's working, of course. Now it's working. Great. Okay. Wait. Here we go. All right. One more time. One more time. Here we go. All right. And then we can all sleep well. Oh, yes, 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 yes.
right? Katie wanted to open that sandwich shop with Tom, but he wasn't interested. He was too busy doing this failed strip mall bar. Your fault, bro. I mean, look at this is just, this is the face of two men who realized they have lived their life incorrectly for 57 years. These two 57 year olds are realizing we did it all wrong. We should have been like the women. Yes, HC, I'm so glad you could catch it live. <laughs> oh, too big. Now what Rachel said, ah, ah, ah. 57, 57, like, 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 like. I mean, it was just so fantastic to see their faces and see the women getting success with their business. And yes, Andy, replace that trash sweater you got on Watch What Happens Live because you do not need that bad energy. And then we go to the scene of Ariana, um, or not Ariana, I'm sorry, Lala and Sheena and Katie talking about their friendship. And then Tom throws Katie under the bus. Well, no, Katie, you said that La you were more loyal to Lala than she was to you. You did say that in full confidence and I'm going to out you. So there you go. There you go. Yes, Priya, Tom could have had a really cute life with Katie, their two dogs and their sandwich shop. But it was never good enough for Tom. Tom always was, Tom Schwartz always found a way to put Katie down, make her into the villain, never had her back, took everyone else's, you know, side. So, and yeah. Oh my goodness. So they talk about their friendship and just how, you know, Lala and Sheena got closer having kids and, and they love that. And then Lala, and, and if anything, like there's a point where, um, speaking of Lala and them talking about the friendship with Sheena and, you know, Lala said I had to eat humble pie. Like I had to eat crow. I had, it was a very humbling experience. I was riding hard for Rand. They played the clip of when she said, you know, when she was coming after Brock and being like, you haven't seen your kids in this long. Don't you ever compare. My man is upstanding to Brock. And now, you know, the irony in how life works a lot of times is, you know, you'll say these things and then yeah, sometimes, you know, you'll then need these people and um, you have to kind of eat your words sometimes and you have to just kind of own that and, that's what Lala did. And now Brock is plays a huge role, according to Lala and Sheena, in Lala's daughter Ocean's life. And it's kind of like a beautiful thing that they have this friendship. Um, I mean, it's hard. It is hard with the scandal of it all to be like, yay, let's trust Brock. Because I'm not trusting any of these dudes um, anymore. <laughs> but... Uh, it, it does seem that Brock has good intentions with this and I'm going to give uh, him the benefit of the doubt just because the Toms and Jacks and every other man that's been on the show has crapped the bed. Maybe, um, you know, it does seem like Brock and Sheena are happy and we know he has previous, you know, children and issues with that child's mom and that's something he's working on, he says, and, you know, getting payments paid back. I don't know the latest update on all of that, but what I do know is that the relationship really took a 180 from Lala going at Brock to now they live next door to each other. The girls, um, Summer Moon and Ocean are besties and the moms came together as friends again, being Lala and Sheena. And Brock, you know, it made Lala tear up the season saying that Brock treats ocean like his own and it has been really helpful in this battle she's going through with rand because again i watched that hulu documentary and oh randall is he is baby harvey baby harvey oh both gross with a capital g so yeah so what just like what just kelly's saying so when you know lisa and tom at the end of this you know they're kind of uh, both going at Lala, um, mostly Lisa in defense of Tom, but Tom like, Lala, you got to own it. You got to take accountability. She's like, for what, bro? For what? I've taken accountability. Whose girlfriend, boyfriend did, did, you know, whose partner did I sleep with? I already owned the James stuff. I already owned the fact that I was wrong about Brock. And I, I said it straight to him and I apologized and I apologized on camera and I apologize again. And I've owned all my shit and I'm sober and I'm doing, I'm trying to better my life and raise my daughter and have businesses. So he just keeps trying to throw the same people under the bus 
to protect himself and it's not working anymore because we see who Tom Sandy Butt is. Yeah, it's haunted. That is a haunted sweatshirt. You got to burn it. Then you got to you got to burn it till it's ashes, then you got to burn the ashes, then you got to put water on it, then you got to drown it. And then you got to flush it down the toilet and then you got to destroy the toilet it was flushed on so the toilet demons can't come up. You know. So it's and then we have Sheena has to um she has to apologize to Katie or she has to kind of, you know, Sheena, this isn't a good position for Sheena uh, because Katie's like, I very clearly told you, Sheena, that I was uncomfortable with the Tom Schwartz and Rachel Raquel thing and you encouraged it and that hurt because I told you that. And Sheena's like, I know. I was believing Raquel and what Raquel said was Bible. And it is, I can see both sides, right? Because uh, Sheena and Katie have had very turbulent past, very turbulent. They've very much been, you know, besties and then at odds, you know. So as I was watching this for like the seventh time, I'm thinking, all right, how can, okay, I'm trying to understand, you know, where they're both coming from. And as much as I agree with Lala that this is freaking bravo, we ain't teaching pre-K, we throw around the bully word a little too much. That happens here on YouTube too. If you have an opinion about someone um, or if you, you know, put information out about someone that they don't want out there, you're a bully. If you do an impression of someone like Tom Sandy, but you're a bully, you know, uh, rather than not everything is bullying. You know, there's also levels to bullying. There's also, you know, with Sheena, when she says that she felt bullied, I do think in the past it could appear like kind of a gang up because you had most of the women going at her and uh, a lot of the larger personalities possibly are the people who are less averse to um, adverse to um, conflict. Um, so you do have Lala like yelling at her, but that doesn't necessarily mean Lala is bullying her. Um, and so it is, I do agree that uh, it's, it's being thrown around a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I think that with Sheena, you know, I think she, she definitely wanted to hurt Katie. And I think she herself would probably admit that um, because she felt hurt by Katie. And so it's this constant like circle of hurt that they kept having in this relationship. Um, I remember Katie's wedding and Sheena crying to her and she just wanted to be there for her. And, you know, Sheena's always been looking for acceptance in this group by the women. She really was the outsider. She was kind of the guy's girl early on. And that's why she had such a close friendship with Sandoval. She says he would pull her in and say, no, you're included. Um, even when maybe, you know, a lot of the women didn't want her included in the show because they saw her as her past of, you know, the Brandy Glanville. That's how she was introduced onto the show is through the transition of having a relationship with Eddie Cibrian while Brandy was married to him. But according to Sheena, she didn't know she was the mistress. And Eddie Cibrian is old AF. He's like my age. Okay. So he's out there looking for, I mean, I'm sure Eddie Cibrian had lots of affairs. I don't know if Sheena knew it or she didn't know, but she's definitely owned it. She apologized to Brandy. They kind of moved on and kind of not. I feel like you're never going to get over, you know, you're never going to become friends with your <laughs> ex's mistress. That's not going to happen. But again, this just shows, you know, how everyone on the show, like Andy said, does have a pass. But at some point or the other, they've all had to put it all on front street. They've had to get dragged by the Internet for their behavior. They've had to apologize. They've had to, you know, deal with that. Um, and so with Sheena, I think she just always really wanted acceptance. You know, remember she wanted Stasi's friendship and Stasi's like, I don't trust you. You know, and she wasn't the nicest to her. Stasi wasn't. And then when Katie was on the outs with Stasi, then she was friends with Sheena. But then it felt probably to Sheena that when Katie got back in the good graces of her real friends, Sheena was just disposable. So, I mean, it's, I just feel like Katie and Sheena are just these planets 
orbiting around each other, but never really on the same page. Um, and I think that, you know, Sheena, I think I've seen her, I don't know if I've seen, I, I think she's said, I mean, in this, she's like emotional and saying sorry, but I know that just listening to her podcast that she does feel that she was duped. But I do think, you know, she should take ownership of the fact that um, she, she wanted to hurt Katie, you know. Um, so if it wasn't Raquel, it would have probably been someone else. So part of the befriending of Raquel was, you know, it was, it was two parts. It was one, she thought she was the outcast that was being picked on or bullied like she felt. And two, it was a great way to kind of start her own girl group with Ariana and she, uh, and, uh, and Rachel Raquel to combat the other girl group, um, like Lala and Katie, um, and then, you know, Stassi, when she was on the show or, uh, you know, um, Christina Kelly, who's on the show right now. So it's, it's, it's complex. I guess that's complicated. Uh, <laughs> but if she, if she owns it and that'll be up to Katie, if Katie forgives her, you know, I don't know if I, I like that they put their stuff aside to be there for Ariana, but I don't know if these two were ever really meant to be good friends. It doesn't seem like it. From their past, it seems like maybe they were just meant to be, you know, associates. Maybe. Because uh, it just doesn't ever seem to work out for them. As much as they try, I feel like you shouldn't have to try this hard to have a friendship. Thank you, Atherella, for dropping my uh, Instagram and my IG links. I don't really see Randall's ex do a lot of interviews um, ever. I know she... She does, you know, talk with Lala and stuff, but I don't really see a lot of interviews with her, but I'd be very interested to get her uh, perspective on this. Just Kelly says, I think Sheena was looking for an excuse to go after Katie. You can't tell me that she didn't understand Katie's pain until after the whole Rachel thing. Yes, 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 yes. She knew uh, she had to do something. Yes, and I think it was, you know, Sheena also was more had a better friendship with Schwartz. And she really was like, I don't even care if I hurt Katie. I like Schwartz. I think Katie's being a bitch to me. And she just didn't really care. And she really thought Rachel Raquel was as innocent and as just like, ah, as she tried to portray herself and as many people thought. Um, so she, she fell for that. So now she's got, I mean, she has got to, she's got to eat a lot of it. I mean, she lost, a lot of friends in this process. I mean, just think Rachel Raquel was, if she wasn't with Ariana, she was with Sheena. I mean, they were together. If you look at Sheena's vlogs, if Sandoval and Ariana weren't taking care or, or babysitting Rachel Raquel, then Sheena and Brock were. I mean, they she the, the allowances, the, the stuff they gave Rachel Raquel, these women were willing to lift her up and really, you know, be almost motherly to her and she dropped all that for sandoval dick i mean that does not make any sense to me but i do think there's part of rachel raquel that thought well i'll just jump in ariana's spot and tom probably told her that's what'll happen and you could be the queen of tom tom and that's why you wear the tom tom sweater so i think it was a lot more calculated than uh she would like to let on and uh, probably led by tom sandy but just him being the older and the more devious but i mean who knows who knows they're, they're they both suck they both suck right now but i think katie made a good point to sheena just you know i'll have to see actions um and maybe don't just believe people so easily and because it seemed like they just accepted rachel raquel so quickly but then again you know you're watching the edited show so i don't know how much time she really spent around them. And I do know that as far as the women on this show, Ariana and Sheena were always kind of on outside of the main, which is a wee You know, they were always kind of hanging out on the outskirts. You know, they were never, there were moments they were let into the main circle, but it started with Ariana and Sheena as, as besties. And Ariana was like backup dancing with Sheena. And then she got in a relationship with Sandoval. Um, so I think obviously their relationships have grown through the years and, you know, now Ariana and Kristen are very close and Katie and Ariana are close, but they, it was almost like those two versus the witches of WeHo crew. So, yeah. So anyways, long story short, I think Sheena probably feels, I think she 
probably is like, oh, F. I mean, Sheena's been, she's been on the unpopular side of this show quite a few times. So she knows what that feels like. And I'm sure she prefers, I mean, who wouldn't prefer to be on the more liked side, but she is definitely like, I believed Rachel Raquel is Bible. I really bought into her stuff. And James is like, yeah, you believed all this stuff. And so Katie's like, well, we'll see where this friendship goes. And Sandoval's like, oh, you don't believe Rachel would go? God, dude, like, really? You don't believe her? And she's like, no. Watching it back, I fully believe that Rachel Raquel was just lying to me. And then they cut to Rachel Raquel in the um, <laughs> in her little shack, in her little um, shack of shame. And she's like, okay. And they're just like, no, she's a liar. Rachel Raquel's a liar. Because Rachel Raquel, you know, she was playing this up. She was playing this up and, you know, Sheena says she, she gets it now. She is trying to atone. So hopefully they can move forward, but I, I don't know if I see these two ever being besties. Let me know in the chat what you think. Um, but Katie's like, you throw your loyalty to the wind. And Sheena has said quite a few times that this has been a very eye opening and humbling experience for her. So she, she's learning. She's learning. And then this is when Lala talks about the bullying. Like, okay, we got to stop mentioning this bully stuff, okay? Because this isn't we're teaching pre-K here. This is freaking Bravo. We're all big personalities. We all signed up for it. Ain't nobody bullying anybody, okay? And then <laughs> Sandy Buck goes, well, God, seriously, dude, there's not like an age for bullying. And then Lala's like, please fuck off, Mr. I F my friend behind my girlfriend's back. And he's like, oh, you're just going to use that for like the rest of my life, like forever. Like that's a crutch. You're going to hide behind that. So I get out of jail free card for everything. And she's like, no, I don't give a fuck. Lauren from Utah came out guns blazing. She's like, I don't give a F what you say, sir. Because I think you're a piece of shit. I think you're shit. And then James Kennedy's like, it just means you're a turd. It just means us turds talking. You know, those things you flush down the toilet. Turds. He's a little turd. <laughs> and she, Lala's like, I didn't bully anybody. I just knew Rachel Raquel was moving like a snake. My mom said she got snake moves, and that's not how we move in Utah, okay? And now I'm right. And I was right about you, and I was right about her. So boom, boom, pow. And <laughs> Sandy Butt's like, don't use me as a scapegoat. And you use Rachel Raquel as a scapegoat. Like, seriously. So you have to go to Sheena's wedding events. And Lala's like, do I hate being a bridesmaid? Yes, I do, bitch. I do. But I love you, Sheena. And if you got married again, I would be a bridesmaid. But I would do it reluctantly. Okay? So she was just like, boom, 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 boom. Lauren from Utah. And it, uh, and Lala's just like, now we know why. You're both pieces of shit. And I knew it. She's like, I sniffed Raquel a mile away. I effing sniffed you a mile away. So that's what I'm gonna say. Like she, she's just getting she's getting her Lala on and Sandy, but his sockless ass can't handle it. He's like, Oh, my feet are so cold. Your burns are so are so hot. I don't know what to do. I knew you were capable of this shit. You move like a snake. And then Rachel Raquel's in her shack of shame. And she's like, oh, God. When is it sex with Sandoval time? I like cigarette and sex with Sandoval time. Is that what's happening? Lala then says, I may say a lot of crazy fudging shit. I might hurt your feelings. I might sleep with your mom. I might not change the sheets on your bed after I'm done with it, okay? But your mama's food, sticks and stones, baby. Sticks and stones. I ain't having your man. I ain't having your man. And then Sandy Butt's like. I was like, I'm not banging your man. And Sandy Butt's like, but like, you have. What man do you have, Sandy Butt, that she banged? Which man? Did she bang Schwartz? Who'd she bang? James Kennedy? Is that yours? And then Lala's like, who? Who, Sandoval? Who, 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 who? She's just throwing, she's just 
throat, just, mm, mm, Lauren from Utah is just coming correct. And Andy's like, I'm tired. I am so tired. They do pay me enough for this, but I'm tired. And then Lisa's like, no, 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 but la, 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 la. You did. You did definitely own this before. You did say before we knew Rachel Raquel was an abhorrent demon woman. You did know that you did come at her very aggressively. You did own that. You've actually said, I feel like I've been a little aggressive with the demon woman, Rachel Raquel, in the past, not knowing what you know now, but you've coped to that. And then Sandy Bud's got his mommy sticking up for him. So he's like, yeah, yeah. Like, what grown man? The noise is coming out of this dude. I'm like, I know you were born in 1972, but I, this is very eight-year-old. Very spoiled eight-year-old. I don't want to insult eight-year-olds, but it's so crazy. <laughs> His responses are just very abnormal. They're, yeah. And he looks over to the side. He's just like, yeah. Good job, Mom. Thanks for sticking up for me. <sighs> Lisa, this isn't helping. And then Katie goes, it's called, called accountability. Yeah. Uh, Lala was accountable. And then Lala goes, yeah, correct. And you have the balls to say, because Sandoval did say, Katie, you got to be accountable. Lala, you'll be accountable. Because Sandoval's just like the judge of accountability. He's the accountability police, even though he's never been accountable for anything in his life and just blames women. So she's like, accountability, Katie. Accountability, Katie. Katie. And <laughs> Lala's just going, Lala. You're going to share your life more, Lala. You're not sharing your life more. Sandy Bud's mad. I know that. God, I know that. Sandy Bud just like, I know that. I know that. <laughs> and that's when James is like, boo, boo. And then they start going, shame, 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 shame. <laughs> and still, then, uh, Sandy Buck gets his like little mini Utah guns out. And he was like, but you are not, you're not owning your shit. What hasn't Lala owned? She owned the shit with Rand. I think for the most part she, she did. I mean, she says she didn't know how awful he was. And also she got sober. I will say as a sober person myself, going to sobriety is very eye opening. And you look past at your mistakes and it is just like, Holy shit. And you do, you go, I mean, if Lala is someone who, you know, is, says that she went through the steps and that is one of the steps is you got to own your shit. You got to, you know, um, make apologies. You got to make amends. Like that is one of the steps. If you go through the program, if you go through a 12 step program, but there's so much you learn about yourself and there's so much of your behavior that is under a magnifying glass. Cause you have to, you have to understand it. You have to own it. You have to, you know, make your amends. Um, and so to act like Lala hasn't done this is just idiotic because that's literally what her program has her doing. And that's literally what she's been talking about for a while now. It just proves that this dude doesn't, he doesn't know anything and he doesn't care. The Lala's like, for what? What am I going to own? What I do? What I do? And then Sandoval, I mean, my God, the elderly in him is coming out. He's like, oh, I fart Mozart, everybody. Is that a rip? Is that a drag? What are you doing there? Is that a read? You fart Mozart? Like, that's what you're saying about Lala? Lala thinks she farts Mozart? Oh, my God. It's like, what do I do? And then Lisa goes, Lala, sometimes you've been pretty aggressive. You know that got a cop to it. So in all of that, Lala has her points down, pat, boom, boom, Lauren from Utah. She's handling the business because she's a grown woman. Sandoval should be able to handle his business as a grown man, but he can't. He needs mama Lisa to come back in. And she goes, Lala, sometimes you're being pretty, okay, you're being pretty aggressive. You know that you've cop to it. And then they all come at Lisa. Oh, basically James and Lala. Like, you have to stop. You have to stop. You have to stop with this. And James is like, oh, 
you're sticking up. And Lisa's like, I'm not sticking up for Tom. And Sandy Butt's like, she's being reasonable, guys. Ugh, God. Ugh. Seriously, like, what? She's being reasonable. She's got my back. <laughs> so immature. <laughs> and Lisa's like, no, no, no. I'm talking to you. And they're like, no, 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 it's not true. Nope. James leaves. James walks. So he goes, I'm not going to listen to this shit. And then Rachel Raquel's in her shack of shame going, oh, my God. And then Lisa looks over at Lala like. And then the episode ends with previews from the next week. And I guess part two is going to be even better than this part. But what I will say, this what Lisa did is she just set the women's path back. And I don't know if she's fully cognizant of that. We talked about in the beginning has a lot to do with her vested interest, has a lot to do with the generational gap and this problematic way of thinking the boys will be boys being easier on the guys. We've seen this happen time and time again with Lisa and the guys on the show and it's problematic and it's not helping. The women are making waves. Like they are finally getting their say. We're finally seeing these problematic men called out um, the women getting their voice back from this narrative that the Toms tried to create and Lisa just gets in the damn way. And so I will continue to say that this is a reunion that Lisa should have sat this one out. She's not adding anything to it. No kind of impartial voice, no motherly voice. It's strictly team Tom. Very rarely in this reunion do you see her actually calling out the Toms. You know, it's like, oh, Schwartz is not that smart. You know, it's just like little things like that. It really, if anything, you know, these are like mic drop moments. Lala's like, boom, boom. Ariana's like, boom, boom. You know, Katie, boom, boom. And then Lisa like, oh, come on, you guys. We've all done that. No, we haven't all done that, Lisa. And it is very unfair of you to peg Lala as this like aggressive beast when you are sitting next to a man baby who hulks out every chance he gets at women. So no, and to downplay his bad behavior, it just, it was a really bad look. Yes. Like I'm going to read some of you guys' comments as we close it out here, but yeah, LVP was unnecessary to this reunion. And this is with all due respect, Lisa Vanderpump. I respect you. I understand the show has your name on it. I actually do adore you. And, but this, this was a really, really, really bad look. It was really bad. And I think, you know, as a businesswoman yourself, you know, you've been through all these experiences. You know these things to be true. Um, there's no there's no reason anymore to protect these toxic dudes. So um, Ashley says, I thoroughly enjoyed the LVP drag. It was definitely well reserved. She's used to getting uh, she used to get accused of bullying herself. She did on Real Housewives. So um, I, I think it was almost like a graduation for a lot of the cast where LVP got the rude awakening that you're not really the boss of us anymore. I mean, you are, but you aren't, you know, because these ratings, I mean, <laughs> let's be honest, none of these people sticking up to Lisa are going anywhere. And Lisa's not dumb enough to have them go anywhere because this is the cast. I mean, this Vanderpump Rules right now is the moment. It's the show. I mean, it's always been a great show. There were a couple seasons that were bad and it was headed on the toilet, but Scandival gave it life again. Unfortunately, this, you know, terrible event, but also it was just this awakening. I think it's so much more than just like, it's not like you're celebrating a tragedy. It's like you're celebrating the truth finally coming out and you're also shocked at it. And you're going through as a viewer, all the stages of grief as well, just on a lesser level. So it's crazy. Yeah. Lisa, oh, Shelly's saying Lisa is, or Shelly uh, is saying Lisa is losing her sniper from the side finesse. Boop, boop. These kids, I mean, they, they're seeing it, you know, Schwartz does. He worships Lisa in a really, um, it was a, uh, in a really weird way. Uh, Joanne, was he drinking shots? I don't know. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. It definitely wouldn't surprise me. I do. My wish would be personally for James to be on a sobriety path, but that's, he's got to figure that out on his own. Yep. And you're right. She does have that vested interest. So if the Toms fail, she loses money, but really, I think this is a moment where you got to pivot and she, she's talking, I mean, she's a businesswoman. She's a good businesswoman. Um, and she's, she has so much experience. And again, it's like when Ariana talked about how she was going to separate herself from everyone associated with Tom and Lisa's like, even me. 
And she's like, well, I mean, and Ariana kind of rolled her eyes like, yeah, you, if you choose to keep doing business with him. But Ariana also answered it in a very adult way where, where I think they wanted her to say, yes, you have to stop doing business with the Toms. And she's like, I'm not going to tell Lisa Vanderpump how to do her business, but I have my own boundaries. And I think that's totally healthy for Ariana to not want anything to do with this man who was trying to destroy her. Remember, unnecessarily cruel man. So um, Lisa's looking out for her own interest, and that includes the Toms. But I think this is a great opportunity if she really thought about it to rebrand in the best way possible. And um, I mean, you could even keep Tom Tom up and just it's just like I just feel like there's a, a rebranding in Tom Tom that could happen sans the Toms and also investing more in the women if they allow her to, you know, I think Lisa is underestimating how strongly people feel about this. She is. She definitely is, because I think what you'll see next is, you know, you always want to follow the propaganda with this stuff. You always want to follow these campaigns. And what we're kind of seeing next is the media will feed into all this and go, yes, Gandible, and they'll make all the money they can off it. And then that's when they're like, okay, guys, but it's mob mentality and everyone's bullying. And it's like, no, no. Well, Michael Rappaport, unfortunately, he can't be, God love him, um, but he's too engrossed. He's too engrossed in Hollywood, so he has to be, I feel like he has to kind of always take that stance for fear. Um, I think that's why he was, also, I don't, I don't always love Michael Rappaport's reads. I don't dislike him. I don't know the guy, um, but yeah, read the room, dude. <laughs> I mean, I feel like he thinks he has to say that. I think obviously once you're in the Hollywood circle and things, you are going to be a little more cautious to um, lose stuff. He could be friends with Lisa. I mean, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, that's disrespectful. They're like almost 40. So as long as no one's out there, you know what was disrespectful, Michael Rappaport, which you probably agree with, is how Sandoval talked to Terry, Katie's mom. They actually were talking to Lisa more respectively than um, Sandoval talked to Katie's moms. Yeah, the students have surpassed the teacher. Miss T says the rumor is Lisa has known about the affair. Oh, no. Well, I don't know. I mean, all the Team Kyle and Team Dorates would be Beverly Beach by Dorate. Dorate's at home right now blogging. She's like, hello, fan. It's me, Dorate, Beverly Beach by Dorate. Lisa Vanderpump has long been a sniper from the side and... She knew about that affair, just as she knew about Lucy Juicy Apple Goosey, whatever the dog's name was, that I had to return because he bit my dear Jagger and the other one. XOXO Beverly Beach, boy, Dorit. Um, Chelly says, Ariana was so diplomatic, but Lisa knew what she was saying and she was shook. Yeah. Uh, Mystic. Oh. <gasps> <laughs> Says the bombshell be that Lisa allows Raquel to do care. Apparently, there's a bombshell coming. Could could the bombshell be that Lisa knew all along? Because <sighs> what is what what more can they throw at us without us having a heart attack? In my opinion, um, Ariana is you are never discussing me or saying my name around Sandy Butt to LVP. Um, uh, Ariana is you are never discussing me or saying my name around. Yes, well, I she wants Sandy Butt out of her life. I've had the similar situation happen. There were people that I cared about that, you know, due to familial ties and other things had to be loyal to my cheating ex. And I had to cut ties and just say, Hey, I don't want this person in my life. I don't want this person knowing about my life. I want to move on. I want to start my life without any ties to this person. So to read, to read. I heard it was even worse the way he talked to Terry. Oh yeah. Terry herself said, on Lala's podcast, that it was horrible, Joanne. PM says he even blames the therapist. I know. I want to see the look on the ther that therapist that had to work with Tom Sandy, but God bless. God bless. I know how, right, Shani? How dare he talk about her beautiful mom like that? And how dare Raquel, aka the poo poo head, roll her eyes at Katie's mom? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, you stopped following Rap. I, mean, I don't really follow him. I see him when he's on Watch What Happens Live, but for me, it's like even some of the like celebrity, you know, um, bra Bravo, Bravo bloggers or Bravo commentary people. Sometimes I just can't. I still like them, but I get that there's certain things 
because they have friend ties and stuff. And there's certain things they say just because that's how LA works. So I get what they're doing, you know, for their business and stuff. I don't begrudge them for that, but I like to follow people who really give me their true opinion. I like to hear that. I do follow that or I follow people like just the facts, you know, people who are just going to tell me what happened so that I can think about it and get my own commentary. Um, so <laughs> you could see that being okay. I don't see Lisa letting Ken know, but <laughs> that is quite the thought. I just no, because I've heard her say things about like if Ken, Ken straight out cut his dick off, you know, and that back in the day, he was kind of like a, a little rowdy, you know, Adam says, Ariana and Lala setting boundaries. Yeah. When it comes to exes, boundaries are healthy. Rachel Raquel was taught about boundaries by Tom Sandy, but the season, remember we started the season on boundaries, but yet when the women that aren't Rachel Raquel, that weren't taught boundaries by Tom Sandoval set their boundaries. I'm telling you through Lala sobriety, I guarantee you just with experience in my own life, She's learned a lot about boundaries. She's learned a lot about herself. She's done a lot of self-evaluation, more than Tom Sandy Buck can even imagine. So sobriety in a lot of ways can be a game damn changer. And the fact that they're not giving her any credit for this. I mean, I've definitely had my criticisms of Lala in the past. And there's been many a time that I've questioned, you know, like, how did Lala not see Randall? And, you know, part of me was always like, I feel as though Lala wanted in that door by any means necessary. So she was willing to forego or overlook, you know, all these red flags or possible marriage or, you know, but that's because that's kind of the LA way is that a lot of this is set up by these older gross dudes who are gatekeepers. And then unfortunately, you know, um, women then, you know, younger, much younger, much more attractive women have to, then it's like a transactional relationship. You know, the guy provides the opportunities, the money opens the gate and the women provide their youth and their beauty to make, to feed the guy's ego. So in a way, you know, that relationship, definitely that's how, if you look at Randall's ex-wife, I mean, she's gorgeous. Lala's gorgeous. Randall is a freaking monster. Uh, nobody has ever gotten a lady boner for Randall in his life without him holding up hundred dollar bills in a Range Rover in front of them. That's just how the vagina works because his voice is gross. He's gross. He says gross stuff. Obviously he's allegedly a Harvey Weinstein Jr. But I do understand that, um, you know, even I have to check my own shit and check my own, you know, internalized misogyny and check my own, and remember that, you know, Lala was, she's, you know, she was very young when this went down. Lala was, you know, brought into, I mean, you know, you, LA is just, Hollywood is, it's a, it's a beast. I mean, it is, it's gross with just my, it can be wonderful, but it can be so disheartening and, and with women and like you're saying with times up and me too. And Lala's went through so many changes since then and with sobriety and age and now a baby and owning her shit and her part of it. It's like, um, I really do respect that and her wanting to, you know, be her best self. I think that's a beautiful thing. And it's unfortunate that that kind of transactional relationship exists still in Hollywood. And most of the gatekeepers are still men. And if there are women, there are women that are so afraid to lose their position uh, within Hollywood that they uh, turn a blind eye to the men's behavior. And it also necessarily, why does it always fall on the women? So it's the women that are going to be victimized by these gatekeepers. And then the women that are going to have to be the whistleblowers on them. It's a very unfair dynamic and it's women are tired. We're tired, you know? So, um, when I remind myself of all those things, cause when Lala first started on the show, I mean, I thought she was great. And then the Rand, some of the Rand season, I was like, mm. yeah. So that's just my personal opinion. You guys are welcome to your own opinion, but, um, yeah, some of the like BJ's, PJ's stuff. I was like, I don't want this Lala. <sighs> He's so gross. But thank you, Justine, for the super chat. I was floored hearing Sandy but told Katie's mom, yeah, to shut the F up three times. Did you hear anyone tell Lisa to shut the F up? I mean, Lisa, she's fine. She's fine. She just had people assert themselves and say, no, you can't put me in timeout. This is how I feel. 
I'm a grown adult and this is what we're rolling with. So yeah, they didn't air it. Isn't that interesting, Justine? Is he still getting protected? And, and they'll say, we're afraid. There's death threats. People are crazy. Yeah, people are crazy. Mm -hmm. They are. But that doesn't mean that we can't still have some accountability. Um, thanks, Shani. I appreciate that. Insidious. Tom Farts. Yes, Toxic Tom. Okay, so I'm going to do a follow-up video with uh, where I'm going to break down and roast the um, – uh, call her daddy interview. Cause it was actually really good. Uh, I don't know why I'm saying actually, of course it was really good. Uh, I don't know much about the call her daddy. I remember that there used to be two of them. And then I watched the video years ago about the breakup and now it was, and I think it started on that barstool sports or whatever, but I mean, she's killing it. And I find her to, she's a good interviewer. Like she was asking great questions. Her and Ariana had a good dynamic. Um, so I was, I learned a lot on that interview and it was very, very thought provoking and entertaining. Um, Sandy, but would do the same to LVP. Oh, Sandy, but will I'm surprised. I bet you he has told Lisa like F you have you, we've seen Sandy, but get aggressive with Lisa. Oh my gosh. Brown has said maybe production did know, but they never said anything because they were the favorites, the Tom Toms. The Schwartz and Sandys, the partners. So they have to stay hush, hush. Yup, yup, yup. Witness says, yep, I'm older and the same BS is being pulled on the youngsters still. And I'm done with it. Me too. Oh, you noticed the Adderall comments. All right. Oscar girl says, gross. No one should have tolerated that BS. I would have had his arse walked out of the restaurant and made to apologize directly to her mom. I I'm surprised Katie didn't punch him. Honestly, if someone talked to Nana like that, hmm, Godspeed. Again, I'm not aggressive. I'm a little aggressive. Uh, I'm not violent unless, uh, you know, it comes to my little Nene. So don't mess with my name. Interview was fantastic. I recommend you guys all listen to it. Um, on, uh, I listened to it on Spotify, but I'll come back with a uh, recap and roast of it because uh, there was a lot of information that Ariana shared. So yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Atherella. Shout out to um, all of my mods and members. Thank you guys for all the super chats. You're so kind and all the comments. Appreciate you so much. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and, ex and please um, post your comments under the video after it posts because I don't get to read all of your comments in the live chat. And so it's so great to hear from you guys afterwards. So even if you already put in the live chat, put in the comments. And I see some people going, I'm leaving too many comments. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as too many comments. Sound off. This is the place where you don't have to feel bad about being totally obsessed with Vanderpump Rules, Bravo, and Scandal. Okay? This is your safe space. If you need a safe space, there you go. Uh, thank you for all the well wishes for my home, and we'll see what happens. So far, I got this uh, some peonies. Peonies. Do you guys say peonies or peonies? Sometimes I say peonies, and people go, peonies. Trader Joe's. Mm, they're so pretty right now. And my little cat face from World Market. I love it. Um, I don't know if we should. Let me know what you think I should do with the space. Should I just keep a white background? I don't know what I'm going to do, but I got to figure out my other monitor. Thank you for your patience with me as it took me forever. This week, it will not. I will be on it because I'm in my space. And I also have fiber internet. I think that's what it's called. Is it fiber? So let me know if the stream smoother because this internet's kind of fast it's kind of fast it's kind of fast linda i'm obsessed with you i'm obsessed with you okay uh so just let me know all your thoughts opinions hopes and dreams in the comment section after the video post you guys uh we're on our way to we're over thirty one thousand subscribers now so welcome new subscribers hello to my subscribers that have been with me for a while and this is the long minnesota goodbye tilly do you want to say goodbye to everyone tilly's like i'm getting used to my new home do you like it tilly yeah, she likes it. She like, we give her extra treats. Oh, there's her beans. Look at her beans. All right, producer Tilly, <laughs> she's over me. She's so over me. She's like, you move me into a new house. Damn it. I just want some more treats. All right, you guys, enjoy your Memorial Day. Um, enjoy your Sunday night. And remember to always enjoy yourself because it's later than you think. Bye. If you like what you see.